desk as well as uh, you know my teammates for the Titan Takedown that's going to be uh, upcoming as well. And uh, sure. yeah, hopefully we get this game underway shortly. I'm going to be really intrigued actually, Josh, because obviously it's the Countdown Cup and with that comes the hero pools that are introduced as well. So we've got different heroes yeah. that are going to be out of, the, out of the situation. I think the most notable one is actually Lucio because we saw so yeah. much rush okay. comms being played around that one pick of Lucio because of the speed boost. And now I'm wondering what are these teams going to be running here in the Dallas versus Paris matchup. So many of the ways in which Dallas have been playing have been centered around that Lucio pick as well. They love to be playing aggressively, fast in their opponent's faces, and we've actually seen much more of the, the ball setups, the Orissa setups, stuff like that coming out from the Paris Eternal. So uh, as we kind of shift this meta down its kind of logical conclusion towards more ball, maybe more Faro as well, so Naga could be playing that, it seems like it's primed for a potential upset here. And you could say that from many of the matches that we've got throughout the Countdown Cup. Even though we've got hero pools, it is looking to be so different to the June Joust, which yeah. also had hero pools, but just a totally different wave of them. Absolutely. Yeah, let's take a look at the Dallas starters uh, to, to kick things off here. And I think these teams are going to be running some very interesting lineups overall, uh, in particular yeah. Dallas as well. Every time in the past that I introduced Dallas, I would say, here's the usual suspects. This time, they have changed up their lineup. Rappel is going to be playing in place of Fielder here. And uh, Josh, you were speculating a little bit just before we, were, we were, went live, you know, about what this might mean. I think this almost certainly means that Dallas is going to be playing a lot more Zenyatta. Uh, Fielder is a fantastic talent, but he's mostly known for his Ana, his Moira, those kind of picks. Um, the, the Batiste, if he wants to pull it out as well. Rappel is a bit more of an old school kind of player. Back when he was coming up, Zen was being played all the time. And so he seems like, based on match history, the more comfortable Zen of the two. Now that does track with where we see the meta heading towards with Ball and Tracer, Sombra, some Farah being played. And, and so that's what I'm theorizing. The, the weird part is that we're going into Li Zhang Tower here, which is normally like big brawl comps clashing together. So I don't exactly know how the meta is going to uh, maneuver, especially on a map like Control Center, where everything's so close quarters. Are they still going to stick to the Ana there? Who knows? Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting. Let's take a look at the Paris starters, because uh, they're going to be the opposition in this matchup here. And uh, yeah, they're going to be running uh, a lot of familiar faces. Uh, and the desk was hamming up as well at some particular elements, I think, from the Paris Eternal, in particular the DPS players. Going to be vitally important, I think, when you get into these these uh, new metas that perhaps, you know, we're, we're kind of theorizing that we might see some Wrecking Ball compositions. Naga has a fantastic fire on him. Onigog with the Tracer yeah, as well. Really good. These are the players that are really going to have to pop off if they do end up playing a lot of those compositions. And Dan's proven that he can play the Wrecking Ball to a pretty high level. And then you have Khan in the back line. If you're afraid of anybody when it comes to Zen, Batiste, he should be up there towards the top of your list. Maybe not the most well-rounded flex support in the world, but definitely one of the most scary when it comes down to his mechanics. So if you get him onto that Zen pick, and Dridro can pocket him with Brig, or maybe they're playing some Mercy comps with Naga as well, then you can get big value out of this back line. It does really seem to me, Brent, like this match is primed for an upset. The meta has flipped favorably for the Paris Eternal, and they were already on an upward swing. Yeah, really. I mean, it, this is a team that's six and six over the course of the season. Uh, I think a lot of people and, have and they this. started one and three, Brent, as well. Yeah. So yeah, that's an incredible improvement. I find as well that like narratives that I build in my head that I attach to teams are often kind of just built at the beginning of the season and it takes a bit of time for me to correct that in my in my mind I think that's the case of a lot of people as well but yeah I definitely need to start essentially showcasing here uh, and really telling the story that the Paris Eternal is a scary team if they find the right meta if they find the right situation and especially the Dallas Fuel they're coming off the back of essentially looking a little bit figured out at the end of these tournaments now this is probably the best situation and best time for Paris to take a win against the Dallas Fuel here today. I totally agree. And um, there was actually an interview recently with the Dallas Fuel talking to the Dallas Morning News and Sparkle said in the interview that Dallas Fuel are doing and utilizing things that they've never done before, meaning compositions that they've never played before. 
and Aid, their assistant coach, said, given that we're on the safer side, having already qualified for playoffs, it feels like we have time for ourselves. Now, what I'm reading into that is, Dallas Fuel have already secured enough league points that they are they know they're through to playoffs. So instead of focusing on short-term victories and maybe relying on comfort picks like Fearless on the Winston, they have time now to learn how these Wrecking Ball comps work so that they're incredible by the time it gets around to playoffs, grand finals. That's the focus, which means they might be a little weaker in the short term. We haven't seen that much ball from Fearless, and we haven't seen that much Repel at all. The teams have rolled out, as expected here. A little bit of Nagas while playing the Fire, as well as Sparkle as the opposition. Anna on the field, as well as the Wrecking Ball, and we're going to start to see, yeah, this composition is fantastic for finding these little openings. That's the Concussion Blast, Repel sent straight off the edge. Already a two-player advantage, but Stoli getting demeked. It's still even, and nobody's actually really capping up this point. The res onto Doha, not able to be denied. Khan ends up falling as well. This is turned hand. now to Dallas Fuel. Just getting these opportunities, despite the fact that they had a disadvantage. In the fight, still able to come out on top here in the team fight. They still want to fight toe to toe, though, as the Paris Tunnel don't want to be giving this one up, but eventually going to have to back off. Very close. You can see the tanks went very deep from the Paris Eternal. Naga took a lot of space and they went for that first pick onto Repel. He was their target focus immediately. Checks us down. But the, the Dallas Fuel were able to respond pretty quickly here. And here's where we get to see the uh, the, the Sombra, honestly, have that level of impact. Doha's getting up to his EMP. He already got a hack on Dan earlier on. And Paris have kind of whiffed this re engagement. Yeah, they really have. The EMP is going to connect onto a couple of targets. Enough for them to be able to hopefully clean up this fight now. And Spark is just being growled into the corner. Picks up the Mega Health Pack though, so he's nice and healthy. The Rez not getting denied there by Darn. Trying to roll straight through them. So Repel's going to be back into the action once again. Big Bionade onto Darn if he can survive it. Going to be in a comfortable position to try and take this team fight further. Very aggressive positioning from Repel in all of these team fights puts him as a significant threat. And the EMP wasn't really very clean. The Dallas Fuel have been in control of this point up until now, but Paris have managed to maneuver it back into their control, wrestle it back in favor. And that was partly because they managed to isolate Sparkle and Jexa inside of that house. The Farah does not really want to be playing inside closed quarters. And now they have a barrage, don't have miles away from an EMP, but that hack can always be um, a, a setup for somebody to be able to punish Dano Vestola. Whereas Paris don't really have that. It's more about Onigod pressuring Repel. Yeah, that coordination. The Nana Boost onto Sparkle. I mean, that is a huge amount of faith to be placing in Sparkle to hit the shots, but of course, he's going to be able to make it happen. Juju had nowhere to run, so it's a quick little two piece for him. Setting up the team fight, the barrage on top just to really clinch it out. Really nicely played. I, I love seeing Sparkle out on the Farah. It's He really has been a Swiss Army knife for the Dallas Fuel this season. Just filling the holes in their roster wherever required. We've seen him play Soldier 76, Tracer, all of these picks. Now to get him back on one of his comfort roles, a, a hero where he can just carry the game, that is joyful to watch as a Dallas fan. It's different for sure, but that part of this roster is very cool. Oh, it's a real MVP discussion, I think, around Sparkle. I mean, being a jack of all trades player, just able to make it work. Look at him go. Two shots, Naga's down. Now Onigod will respond. He was in the back line, Repel falls there. But the res is going to come through. Concussion Blast from Spark, not able to deny the res on Tanaga, so back into the fight. But Dallas still in control of the point. You can see the complete juxtaposition between the way this comp is played. It's so slow compared to what the West is used to when they play these rush compositions. A lot of team uh -oh. fights taking place all over the place. That's the Nana Boost on Tanaga, and he's found the shots. Already Spark was going to be falling, moving forwards, needs to catch it onto Jexa, but just about gliding to safety still. The Paris Eternal flipping this point back over now. They have players alive, and that res, again, not going to be denied up. So Repel's back in the action. The backline of the Dallas Fuel is healthy. Great opportunity for a counter-attack here. Repel with a Nana Boost as well. Probably going to look to land it onto Sparkle. Maybe use it as a healing appealing tool, but no, there you go. Straight onto the star player. Can he land the shots? He's searching for it, he's desperate, but the movement is too clean from Naga, just dodging and juking. A lot of the shots going his way. In fact, Naga jumps on him as well when Sparkle was down with no more fuel, trying to chase him down, taking out the opposition. Paris Tunnel flipping the point as well, incredibly important for them now. 75% in counting, they just want to keep this ticking over as much as possible. 
It's Don't very you? difficult to flip the point with this comp. There are so many people that can keep it active. And so you have to win such a decisive team fight. There's a boop though, and Don falls, but Repel traded, easily res. Jex has been so good with those. Yeah, and these resurrects have been pretty free, honestly. No denial from either side in it. Then there's the Nanabu Sparkle needs to get out of there. The Concussion Blast right up into the air again. Naga not really connecting the shots, but there's one onto Doha at least, and he has set up enough damage for Fearless to go down. The barrage of close Sparkle completely shuts him down, but Khan's still alive. Two kills Khan. for him, make it a third. Jex has fallen as well. Khan just single-handedly keeping them in this fight. So much value from him in this team fight. He slept Fearless, got the kill on Sparkle, and then the kill on Jexa. EMP now for the Dallas Fuel as well. Doha very weak. Do they have the finishing tools available? Sparkle himself has been nanoed this time on Tracer. Yeah, man, he's searching for the Tigers, but look at the peel in the back line. It's elite. Naga just holding on to this barrage, has it ready and waiting, but there you go, hacked out of it. That might have been beneficial for him. Already able to just survive a little bit longer, and Paris flipped the point over again, 97%. They have the players, but can they try and clean up this fight as Dallas Fuel are just slowly trickling in? Is anybody going to be able to touch? Not quite. The Paris Eternal taking round number one in this uh, incredibly close engagement between both these teams. Yeah. It felt like Dallas Fuel were in control up until that nano boost that got used on Sparkle without any value. And at that point, they created an opening where Paris were able to get back in, Naga found the kill, and then the Paris Eternal have that insane fight where Khan manages to sleep the ball and kill the Farah Mercy with help from the rest of his team. I I'm interested to see when we go and see Zenyatta being played. So normally when you're running a Farah, you'll be running Mercy and Ana a lot of the time. Oh, oh, oh no, he managed to get out of here. Uh, he just was just able to touch. To touch. Okay, so normally when you're running the Farah, you're going to be running Ana Mercy because the Ana is much more sustainable, self-sustainable on the floor. The Zen is just too easy to kill, even though he'd potentially provide more value. But in this version of the comp that Dallas are running, where you're not going for the Farah pick, Rappel has the chance to flex over to Zen, and that's what they've brought him in for. The legs as well on the battlefield. I mean, we're no strangers to it. Sometimes a spark are playing it, though. Naga still in the Farah, and look at these rockets. They are really just pushing Dallas to these uncomfortable angles right now. They don't want to be trying to play around it, but look at that peel, hand been from the side. The booster's pushing him just underneath all of them. And Dallas Fuel, they weathered a storm and the damage that was coming their way. They battle straight through it once again. Flashbang from Onigod, not really going to be doing too much there, but a good initial team fight here from Dallas to take it away. This starts to ask some questions to the Paris Eternal, though. What, what does Naga have in terms of his hero pool that's going to be useful in this meta if you can't get value out of the Farah? Okay, well, question uh, postponed until another time, I guess, because Rappel nano boosted and damage boosted from his Mercy takes down Rappel with a very easy shot. Yeah, that is intriguing, and still they're going to be able to push this team fight a little bit further forward as Hamden was out of the mech. It's an easy shot for him. Dallas now just looking to try and stall this one out as long as possible, but they don't have the bodies to try and jump on and off the point. So just going to be resetting, rethinking how they want to take this next team fight. A couple of ults online, in fact, almost five coming up very close. The to with Paris with control and a high ground as well. Uh, Dallas are going to fight them over it here, but Doha's not really favored in the fight against Naga in close quarters. The thing is that Dallas Fuel's composition has way more poke damage. Doha's going to go for this as well. Wow, that's the kill on the Farah. The Helix rocket in air, self-destruct onto the ground. It pushes them right round the corner. It might be a bit of space created for them. Now the mines as well, scattered all over the place. Sparkle desperate to try and follow up on a bit of the damage that's going their way. No one able to deny the resurrect up, but the damage might be done regardless of all of that. Big fire nade onto Dallas, but it's it's futile. They flip the point over and start getting some capture progress on the board as well. And big value from the rally in the middle of that team fight. Another win condition that Paris Eternal don't have access to. So much of Paris' team comp is built around Naga and, and that Farah finding value. You know, they can't run a Zen because they're running the Farah. They can't run a Brig because they're running the Farah. So they don't have access to Discord Orb, extra poke damage, rally, that kind of stuff. So they really need Naga to be able to find value in these fights. And Control Center is awkward. You're, you're constantly uh, having to compromise your own position. Oh yeah, here we go. And you can see the Nana Boost onto Naga again. This is what they're really requiring is Naga to get a couple of kills to these damage boosted rockets. But Dallas Fuel, they're so split. You can see how awkward that was for Naga to try and even just lock onto a single target to try and find anybody. And Dallas Fuel, they just absorb all the aggression coming their way. They poke and prod and eventually bring down enough targets. They just win out the team fight.
It feels like their win conditions, Josh, are just a little bit more solidified, I think. And it's map dependent, right? Because yeah. on a lot of stages, you are going to be able to find that big value from the fire. But this just doesn't seem like one where it's as easy. You know, normally Dallas Fuel's composition would, I think, lose to a, a comp with Lucio in it. But Lucio isn't available here. So it opens up these other um, these other uh, compositions that you wouldn't normally see here on Control Center. Now for this one, they've again oh. nearly got... Uh-oh, well, Hanbin is just going to get the neck there. The okay. Well, now it does go down in the end. It's gonna be the one for one. Toa ends up go, using go, the go. tactical visor. Oh my word, almost set off the edge. The other time is going no. Paris are gonna need to touch this one. Gets the DMAC anyway. Overtime still falling. Now they wanna keep it going just a little bit longer. Dan falling very low, has to back out of this fight. And you can see just how agile the Dallas Fuel's composition is. Zipping and zooping around all these different angles and no one can really shut down a singular target. That's gonna be them closing out that round. Easily done if you just look at the score line here. But definitely a bit of a stronger idea of how to play that specific comp against what Paris were running. Yeah, I mean, I like the Soldier 76, and the positioning from Doha and Repel was good. You, the, I was putting a lot of emphasis on the fire in my analysis there, but also they do have uh, other ideas of what they could do. You know, Oni God and Dan can link up and go for these two man dives with the ball and the tracer onto the Soldier 76 or onto the Zenyatta. And so a big credit, I think, to be given for the positioning of the back line and then Hanbin and Jexa peeling away those threats and stopping Onigod and Dan from having that big impact. And now we move over to Night Market where it looks like both teams are gonna go for similar ideas, except with Naga playing Sombra. Haven't seen too much of that and I thought Doha would be the one, if anybody, to pick up the Sombra in this match. Instead, it looks like Doha was anticipating the Pharah once again. Otherwise, the Soldier 76 is not as useful in these scenarios. You can pump in a bit of that poke damage. But, yeah, I do agree with that point you were making. Now the point's going to start to get played up here. Sparkle that hacked. Sparkle taken out, hacked. An easy target for them, but on the other side of things, of course, Naga, the Discord Orb and the Shield Bash. Easy pickings. Repel though trying to take the outside approach. Dan set him straight off the edge flying. You can see Dan's still going for these environmental kills. No shield bash available for Jexa. Possibly could have saved himself, but didn't have it available. And Dan is definitely proficient when he's playing this Wrecking Ball. He's played it throughout the season, even before it was really defined as the meta by the Eastern region. And you can really start to see it come alive here. Absolutely. And you compare that to Fearless, the best Winston in the world. I don't think many people are arguing that. But Ball has not really been in his wheelhouse if we look at his match history. He doesn't play it very often. Doha continues to try with this Soldier 76. Doesn't feel like the best option to me. The Sombra offers you way more win conditions in these fights. Based off the hacks, the additional damage you can do, EMPs you can charge. Oh, oh, Dan just about gets oh out. Oh my goodness. He drops the mines on the point because he didn't know if he was going to get out alive. Just to try and push them away for but a moment. Oh my God, has the Discord all marked on him. Has to just dodge around the corner, break the line of sight so it gets taken off of him. Has the pulse bomb straight over the top of that Tambin. Great awareness. Eats it up with the defense matrix. Fantastic work. And now the Transcendence leading it in. Dallas Fuel with his healing advantage. They need to try and win out this team fight, but they've already lost the player. Sparkle into the corner. Has the pulse bomb. Doesn't want to let it loose just yet. He's worried about it getting eaten up, perhaps. Has to use the recall now as well. Paris still holding on. Finally, Khan goes down. That one pickoff should start to open things up, though, for the Dallas Fuel. Absolutely. No Discord Orb available. I mean, Rappel died earlier on in the team fight, but he's going to be able to come back in. Rally Armor again, sustaining everybody from Jexa. Dredro didn't have it available up to 90% himself, but Paris should be pretty fine with this. They can just disengage, come back in, Rally, EMP. As long as they land it onto a couple of people, there's not that much that the Dallas Fuel can do here. I think Dallas now, Considering the alt bank available to the Paris Eternal, it's on Dallas to be the initiators, the aggressors in this situation. They can't just sit back passively and wait for Paris to set up for the perfect engagement. You've got to put the pressure on the Eternal. Khan as well, sending out these volleys, almost just took Doha's head off. <laughs> Has to play a little bit careful, honestly. He's not the only one doing some poking. They really are just sitting back at the moment. Yeah, though. they are. This They're just waiting. feels dangerous they've, to me. They've let them in. They've let them in. Paris Eternal now with a bit of control over the point. You can see Fearless just rolling through. That's the rally from Dredro. It's going to give their team a bit more armor now to just try and lead in this fight. Where is Naga? Off Here he is. Corn. Repel goes down. That's Naga using that EMP. I believe only Doha was the one caught out by it. But already these picks are going their way. Onigot's still alive. Look at the pressure. 
He's applying right now. Point flipped over. Dallas Hill forced to just play backwards. Can anybody even touch this in time? It looks like they're going to be able to get somebody there at the very least. I mean, there goes Hanbin. He just about dips inside and outside within time. Keeps hold of his mech. Fearless, he has the mines available to himself as well. Paris Eternal, they still have that huge ultimate available from Khan. But Dallas again close to the double. Support ultimates. Khan's transforced as well. This could go the way of Dallas. They could. Now the Transcendence, they have a big advantage leading into this fight, along with the Rally as well. They're rolling over the back line. The Dallas Fuel, somehow, somewhere, they pull it out. And now they've got the team fight win. That is just fantastic work from them. It was looking so good for the Paris Eternal in terms of the way that that team fight was set up, but a lot of that I think off the back of Sparkle as well, forcing out our Transcendence, making them really engage when they probably didn't want to. They probably wanted to match it alt for alt. Yeah, that is that is a mad team fight for the Dallas Hill to be able to win. Hanbin just nipping his head into that to force out overtime, but again, Again, Paris is going to have this ult bank available that they can use. Nugget is so close to another EMP, but with Khan falling, I mean, yeah, this, you can't this take fight this. does not look great for them. But okay, let's consider the ult bank situation because Paris still have another opportunity to push back in. In the previous team fight, their rally, their EMP, the Dallas Fuel used their um, their tactical visor and then the self destruct coming out from Hanbin to try and peel people away. They don't have access to either of those at this point. Uh, barring Sparkle hitting something crazy with the Pulse Bomb, Paris should win this team fight. But, but I mean, we said that last time, and they only, ju only just managed to win and then couldn't hold on. Sparkle with the Pulse. Oh, my what word! a stick! Khan's gone, and that's going to be no eat available. No Transcendence to save him. The Rally Force out of Dredro. And we see Rappel actually ends up going down here. Onigod has to try and clutch this up now. The Pulse Bomb to try and win this one out. They've already got the couple of pickoffs off the back of it. The overtime burning as well. That's hand been fallen as he was out of the mech. The pressure. Doha falls as well as that. The Discord orb onto every single target. It's impeccable work. And at the end of the day, they didn't even need the pulse bomb at the end of it. The Paris Eternal taking map number one in this series. Very, very well played. Fantastic stuff from the Paris Eternal. And, and all of that, despite the fact that Sparkle hit the crucial pulse bomb. I mean, he had the only the only miracle that could have occurred there was Sparkle going for that crazy play and picking off down before the team fight. But despite all of that, the backline of the Dallas Fuel just still couldn't hold on against that massive ultimate pressure. I am so surprised, Bren, that Doha committed to the Soldier 76 for that long. I think that was a big compositional mistake, but that's what you've got to expect at the beginning of this Countdown Cup. Compositional mistakes, because they're playing with a brand new hero pool, and a lot of these Western teams have not tried out this style before and ironed out all of the issues. Yeah, it's a meta in flux right now, and the teams are just discovering exactly what they want to be playing on each in particular map. A wonderful, wonderful showcase of skills there from the Paris Eternal for map number one. We're going to go to a short break, and on the other side of things, you can see how this series is really going to start to play out. Don't go anywhere. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Xfinity, the preferred internet provider of the Overwatch League.
The Awards League is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Awards League. And by IBM, the official cloud and AI partner of the Overwatch League. Welcome back from the break, everybody. Let's take a look at our power rankings of IBM Watson. And this time, taking a look at our, our top 10 tracers. Sparkle and Onigo both playing. Uh, a lot of the Tracer actually over the course of their careers and here today as well, Onigod versus his former team uh, as well as Spark is interesting actually the way this kind of lines up between both of these uh, both of these players on the Tracer. Yeah, it's it's very cool to see actually. They're both uh, Tracers playing for the other side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but, but it, it is also interesting as well because you saw from the desk that Onigod statistically is outperforming Sparkle in a lot of these uh, metrics. So, okay, well, why does IBM Watson rank Sparkle above? I think part of it, although I'm not, you know, privy to the secret source that makes IBM Watson tick, but I think part of it is because Sparkle has been able to convert that into map win percentage. You know, he's actually contributing to wins against really high level opponents a lot of the time while playing what was it like 450 hours of uh of tracer so far this season yes. so it's a massive sample size and he's been able to perform against some of the best players in the world whereas only got sat like 72 hours played on tracer i don't think it's been tested as much this season but has obviously as the stats show a lot of potential to do really well i think that's going to be a really cool battle to keep your eyes on throughout this and a large part of Sparkle's success, I think, as well, comes from the coordination with, with his main tank, which is Fearless as an individual. Let's take a look at some of the statistics as well that Fearless has been playing in terms of his play rates with a lot of these main tanks. And uh, I mean, if you've been watching the Overwatch League, you're no stranger to this one, but only 2% Wrecking Ball being played. And this did catch the Dallas Fuel off guard a little bit, I think, over the course of especially the Summer Showdown tournament as well, when it kind of uh, kind of developed that the meta was around these Wrecking Ball compositions. This is going to be a large, I think, center point that people are going to be looking at for the Dallas Fuel moving forwards from now on. Josh, you mentioned the article as well that was written by the Dallas Morning News, where they were discussing about how, you know, that that kind of like taking this as a bit of an experimental period where they can, uh, you know, kind of learn these compositions, you know, take it uh, in its stride almost up until the playoffs. We're definitely seeing it showcased here today. Yeah, they're playing things that are quintessentially not the Dallas Fuel's comfort zone. But that's good for the team long term. Even if it results in losses in, in the short term or vulnerabilities, we still don't know how this uh, series is going to go. It's still a good thing for Dallas to be trying to push themselves outside of that. They've already locked their place into the playoffs. They've got a good chance of being able to make it really deep, have a good, good seed. So, yeah, make sure that you're a very well-rounded team that can play everything. Let's take a look at our map leader leaderboard here, presented by Xfinity as we head to Blizzard World. The Fuel setting a record in the Battle for Texas just this year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's quite intriguing, actually, isn't it? We don't see too many records being set in 2021 because, generally no. speaking, the level of play across the board has been stepped up like dramatically um, for for all of these teams involved. So it's rare to see like very one-sided battles that would result in a lot of these uh, leaderboards being set, but there you go. Well, that one was one-sided. Yeah, that one was certainly. very one-sided, that game. And, and crucially here as well, Repel is staying in. And this is the kind of map where, even though we have seen some teams run far out on point A some of the time, the rest of the map is not conducive to that. So I would expect to see the uh, Sombra Tracer being played the majority of the time here, which means it does free up Repel to play more Zenyatta. It also frees up Khan to play that as well if he wants to, which yeah, we saw a little bit on Night Market, but wasn't really demonstrated across the rest of uh, the rest of Li Zhang. Li Zhang is one of the weirdest um, maps, I would say, for this meta. Something like Blizzard World, much more open, way more routes for, for your Tracer, for your Sombra to be able to get behind the enemy team, set up for these big dives. Um, so I, I think this will be a bit more of a good idea in terms of what is going to be played across most of the maps. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Blizzard World quite open. This map pool that we've actually got in the, the Countdown Cup, I'm a huge fan of it as well. Uh, I mean, off the top of my head, we've got like maps like King's Row, Rialto being played, as well as Havana, uh, and Barney. You, you see some interesting stuff, especially, because when you have these, uh, these different maps in terms of the way that they're laid out, um, sometimes it, it can put forward um, unusual compositions you might not see. So, mirror compositions for both sides here. And this is where we get to see a little bit more about how good Repel looks. We haven't seen him since week two being played for the Dallas Fuel, apart from obviously the match that you just watched, or the map, sorry, that you just watched. 
Good That's stun good. there from Druidro. That denies Fearless high ground any potential to roll through them. So he goes for point pressure instead, drawing people back. Nice hack onto Fearless there, though. Now you're just about avoiding the, the roll through to get detected. And at this point, both teams are just kind of trying to I guess, I suppose, rotate around one another. Dallas are just trying to take this positioning. You can see them working their way around. Fearless is waiting for the goal. Hack there on the tracer. Go. As the power driver comes through, but look at that sparkle. Goes down. That was a hack onto him. Followed up straight away. And the Discord all placed onto Fearless had nowhere to escape. The Paris Eternal, well versed. They know exactly what the Dallas Field are trying to set up. A little bit too obvious, I think, in terms of the way that they were setting up that team fight. Yeah, pretty interesting, actually, watching how these teams are trying to allocate resources. Oni God is staying a little closer to the pack, playing a bit more of a peel-oriented tracer, while it's actually Naga and Dan who are trying to path around together, getting hacks and then pile-driving, utilizing that as being the duo. Uh, most teams will play things most of the time the other way around, playing their Sombra more as, as the pocketed player that's playing with the rest of the team and having the tracer and the ball move around looking for dots. But it's, it's effective both ways, and it does add a little twist into things. A lot, of, a lot of emphasis being placed on that little stairwell. And uh, now you see the Paris Eternal. Okay, they recognize that the Dallas Fuel are looking to try and set something up as they've rotated around onto the point. Ultimate's coming online though. Now I go very close to this EMP. On go just trying to win out the Tracer 1v1 that's occurring. Forced out the recall. Dodged the shield bash as well. Had to use the recall, but look at that stick. That is perfect placement of the pulse bomb. Jexa falling has set up this team fight massively now for them. And with Fearless falling as well, it's pretty much curtains for it. Dallas Fuel are slowly getting some like incremental percentage. You can see they've got 46.5% on the board. But overall, it's slow going for them. And no significant ultimates forced out apart from the rally. A pulse bomb is fine. You throw it out whenever you want. It's not something you have to rely on for a team fight. The rally advantage does go in favor of Jexa, but he's still pretty far off building up his first rally here. And, and now my mind goes towards the mini games between the, the EMPs and the Transcendences, I was about to say, and there it is, exactly. Doha pops his EMP, Khan immediately with a trance. Great play from Khan. Oh, and the fake! Okay, Naga, yeah, he forced out the shield bash there and just about got out. I thought he was going He for got the EMP, trance out of Repel as well, Brent. He got the Transcendence Brent. out just from threatening that he might be having this EMP. The Paris Eternal with a big advantage into this fight. As you can see, just there from the kill feed, already with a couple of kills on the board. I mean, this is just, it seems too easy for them. Yeah, that was a bit of nerves, I think, coming out from Repel, honestly. Uh, you, you've you lost the team fight if you have your Transcendence forced at that point, to be honest. And the fact that they didn't even use the EMP, Naga just came out of stealth right in front of him, and Repel, he is uh, immediately on that Q button. That yeah. sets things way back for the Dallas Fuel. They've got a rally to work with here, and Sparkle could obviously make magic with a pulse bomb. But other than that, things not looking great. 30 seconds left. Sparkle with a pulse bomb. We've seen him create magic. That's the hack onto Dan. Nice kill for they them. They tried to, to trade to onto Doha. They hacked Doha as well, but they couldn't get the kill. So unfortunately, things here may be crumbling for Paris in the final moments. Oh, that's the pulse bomb from Monigo getting aged by Hanbin as well. And yeah, crumble is the right word for it. Doha. Building up this EMP, has it available. Hammond trying to lead it in. That's a self destruct into the back line, but it gets blocked up still. Fearless has fallen. Overtime going for them now. EMP, it's going to catch on to three of them. That's the tanks from the Pass Eternal. Unable to use the abilities. They can just clean this one up. Sparkle, with the help of the rest of this team, along with that Transcendence healing, it's enough to carry the fight forwards. Eventually breaking through this defense that the Pass Eternal were holding on to. A great EMP from Doha, and he built it up significantly faster than Naga did as well. So. That's an advantage there slightly in terms of the Sombra battle. Repel had to use his Transcendence here as well, but all right, that's fine. That was all that the Dallas Field wanted, was just to be able to secure point A. Now it becomes a battle for high ground. There's a lot of different flanking routes. That is a great pick from Khan. He was getting pressured and just destroyed Sparkle. So now they can push forward. That gives them the ability to take high ground control. They don't have to worry about their backs whatsoever. Yeah, no concern for Sparkle, just trying to Pins them as they were pushing it forwards across, trying to get that spawn camp potentially going now as well. Look at this forward positioning by Paris. I mean, this is a Paris Eternal squad that has just found immense confidence. Khan is an absolute freak of nature when he plays on the Zen. I mean, if we are entering this this Zen animeta, 
Carnage is going to come alive for this team, honestly, as a centerpiece. We talk about Fearless all the yeah. time on the other side of things, but Khan is really going to set things in motion for this squad, I think. Only got with a nice little pause from as well. That's said this good orb into the hack to set that one up. And uh, yeah, yeah, Harris, once again, looking comfortable. Just bullying Fearless. And all of this buys time for their big ultimates to come back online. The Paris Eternal used the EMP and Rally in the previous team fight. So all of these stagger kills not only take down the time bank, but allow an equalization of the ultimate cycle. And Dallas, they're going to go straight into this one. Oh, that self destruct engage forced out Trance. Yeah, kind of had to use it. Okay, there's the, the timings there. The post one was obviously not going to be taking him out. Still, Drijo goes down. And this time it is a bit more awkward. Dallas have forced the positioning around, rotated all the way. Onigod needs to try and find something to try and break open. This, but Sparkle hacked up, he just wanders straight into the mines! He gets taken out, going for the one clip, Onigod almost able to make it happen, but just about gets the recall out. Shield Bash, not enough to try and take him down, and still they want to try and coordinate something. This time though, Khan has fallen. I think that may have just been a hack onto him as well, so... Really couldn't be able to do anything just to try and escape through this one. Dallas are 20 Jackson. seconds remaining, they've just about got this Khan moving, Josh. Jexa used his rally there as Naga came out of stealth. Again, I think baiting one of the support ultimates out of the Dallas fuel. It did keep the back line alive while they've been pressured, but now Dallas need value, and Naga is going to get up to that EMP. Here it goes, Khan in the back line. He's hacked. There's nothing they can do to be able to defend him. Dallas with a huge advantage now. Paris Eternal, they still have all the time in the world to reset, though, and they'll be able to come back in with their own EMP. Yeah, they're going to be looking to try and take a clean team fight here. It's Oh, I this mean, is so bad. He's survived this. Only got needs to survive this, but he has a bit of a disadvantage. Sparkle has played that perfectly. Forced out the recall, jumps into the mini health pack as well. He had such a huge advantage into that fight. What a pick! And now Dallas Fuel, they don't need to worry about this, but still the threat comes in. The EMP repel! The Eternal comes through, but they don't touch the point! A minute 30 and they get the objectives! Oh, that's so unfortunate for Paris. They did, I mean, Naga did everything correctly. EMP into the back line, they had a bomb to be able to set up from Vestola as well. That looked like they were easily going to be able to take it. But with Onigod not there, perhaps, and Dan and, you know, Vestola throwing out his self-destruct, no one's there to actually contest the objective. That's a tragedy. Dallas Fuel are kind of getting away with murder here. Yes, when they were just pushing the cart out of, uh, out of checkpoint A with 20 seconds remaining. Now, they've got almost a minute. Give or take. More mind games. More mind games yeah. on up for, uh, on the cards here. As Dohan is his EMP, Khan might get his transport now. <laughs> okay, honey go with the pulse. That is gonna stick. Beautiful work. And repel there. repel trances in the middle of that as well. Against the pulse bomb? I don't exactly know what was going on there. Perhaps he thought he was gonna get hit by it too. Yeah, potentially threatened. This spam though as well from Dallas just catching onto these targets. Oh taken out. Not Doha. Still trying to EMP, look for some can't targets can't react. EMP, yeah, and this is looking like a bit of a snowball now for the Dallas Fuel, if it wasn't already. These targets just cannot be walking anywhere. The mines from Darn is a bit of a last-ditch effort here, but a lot of them just collected up onto the high ground, so not even where he really wants them onto this point. Fearless just rotating around as well, playing around those health packs. Again, it's going to be another overtime push. Dallas Fuel getting the spawners in. Only got so low, and he gets taken out. He's been caught by out. Flail. That is a nasty yeah. pick. He keeps getting caught over and over. It feels like the pressure is getting to Paris right now. They can definitely this fight continuing. You can see the pulse bomb down to Khan, taking him out. D Mech onto Vestola. Power driver from Fearless. He wants to try and clutch this one. EMP comes through. It's going to connect onto so many targets, but can anybody clutch this up? Onigod with the pulse. Still trying to make it work. Still alive in this fight, but eventually they bring him down. That's three. Checkpoints on the board there for the Dallas Fuel. No time remaining, but considering they were staring down the barrel of defeat, that is uh, quite a tasty outcome for them. That's too much. That is way too much. More, more than I think you could say they deserved, but the Paris Eternal just let it slip through their hands. That defense absolutely crumbled like a non-watered sand sculpture. It just disappeared <laughs> into dust. Uh -huh. That was, I mean, that's just an unfortunate one. The Paris Tunnel had so many opportunities to be able to win that, and yet they became disjointed. Onigot got picked off so many times at the beginning of team fights, caught out behind in the 1v1 duel that we witnessed between him and Sparkle, caught again, and then again by Jexa. Uh, Khan not able to react with his, with his transcendence. Everything looked great for Paris up until we got to 
the escort portion, to be honest, Brent. And then as the environment consistently changed and they had to be very conscious of their defensive positionings, they, they got caught out way too much. Yeah, Dallas Fuel showcasing as well that, uh, listen, just because they're playing something new doesn't mean that they're going to be caught uh, unaware. You can't quite spawn campus just yet on that level <laughs> in the game. Yeah, yeah. Five, Definitely keeping themselves four, in this match. Three, now it's up to the well, past eternal to try and respond to this. Yeah, only got just going Hanzo here to throw out a sonic arrow, see if he can scout, I think. Moves back over to the Tracer, so. Mirrored compositions. And we saw Dallas Fuel really struggle with this first offense. They weren't able to get uh, properly into the back line. They were getting disrupted a lot by the defensive Sombra. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at Doha. See whether he can find a lot of value in terms of disrupting the tanks, disrupting the Tracer as they push. Yeah, it's all up to Onigo to try and work his way in. He noticed as well that the health pack was hacked up. He is really in danger here. Be blinking into the wall there, but Naga goes down. Feel a straight for it. One for one. Not always ideal, but when you're missing your main tank, I suppose Fearless can get into the action pretty quickly here. Still, Paris not willing to give this one up. They still want to take the team fight. They're contemplating whether or not they want to be taking it as they're just slowly trying to back out. But as all this is going on, Onigod is trying to coordinate something here. Recall, forced out. Sparkle being pressured very heavily here. Onigod looking for that kill, but not able to get it. Getting stalled out a little bit at this point. No, EM, no EMP advantage for either teams, and the trans uh, marks are pretty close together as well. Seems like quite a lot of this is going to be decided by which Tracer ends up getting map control over on this right-hand side. And Sparkle appears to be backing off. Yeah, the balloon's just escaping there. Sparkle well. in the back line with the pulse bomb. The Sparkle has the pulse bomb. I'm just about missing that one. He was riding on his head straight down the staircase. But the team fight continues. That's a transcendence coming out from both of these teams, eventually fading away here. The, the longer really this stays, traded. the longer this stays out, the better it is for Paris. They have an EMP available, and there it is. But oh my word, it only cut. It was a solo EMP onto Repel, and he got deleted off the battlefield in two seconds flat. Yeah, got the kill. That's what they were looking for. Moving that threat of the Discord Orb away from the battlefield. Now they can start to at least get some pressure onto this point. You can see the positioning for them, just trying to. Push them away. Dallas Fuel looking like they're contemplating contesting this one. The way that they're squaring up to this one. Doha on onto the high ground as well. They definitely want to contest this one. EMP available, holding onto it. Just about get onto it. Doha doesn't want to let it loose and they just walk off the point. Oh my word. What a mistake. It felt like Doha didn't really want to go for the solo EMP there onto Vestola. I will say, great positioning from the rest of the Paris Eternal. Really spreading their pieces out so that Doha couldn't get off a big EMP. Vestola's kind of bait on the point there, and Doha decides, okay, I, re I recognize that this is bait. I don't want to go for it. Unfortunately, the rest of the, his team are not on the same page, and they're not there to continue rotating bodies onto the objective. That's a nice little shoot bash, Doha has to use that to get back. Hacking up as well, and yeah, the positioning from Paris definitely implies that they put a lot of thought and work into this comp that they're playing. It's not just something that they've strung together last minute. Onigod, though, I think he was just trying to blink up onto the high ground. I'm not sure if you can get it from that angle. Sometimes you can, but uh, he was just a sitting target there. The sparkle, nice pulse bomb as well. That's going to be the DMEC as well, just to really stall out this team fight. I was wondering whether Paris wanted to commit to this because Khan had a huge trance advantage. But by the time they reset in this fight, by the time Vestola comes off the spawn, Repel is going to have his transcendence and it's going to be the Dallas Fuel with a massive ult advantage, thanks to Doha's EMP. Now the question for me is, how much value can you get out of it? Even if you get a team wipe, can you take forward positioning? Can you spawn count? Like those are the kind of things that really seem to be important in this meta. Yeah, positioning is really a major key. That's the EMP. Khan was deleted. He said opting just to hold on to it, but Onigod wants to come back in anyway. Forces out the Transcendence from Repel. Could be an opportunity now. If the Paris Eternal bide their time, back off and don't lose any more casualties, they can take a slightly better team fight. Now the mines come through. Sparkle taken out as well. And Khan is coming off the back of the respawns now with this Transcendence, but he might not even need it. Fearless just chased down right to the spawn door. This car will continue to move here. Great team fight there. In the past the turn, or still the Dallas will want to take this further forward. They're still just trying to hold on to this high ground. 
And this is so dangerous. I mean, Naga is going to EMP them at some point. There's a lot of pressure on Dan here. Dan is going down! And Naga has not found an opportunity to go for the EMP. It's all falling to pieces for Paris. Yeah, Onigod as well got hacked up as well when he's trying to play around the cart. Three picks for them. Despite Fearless going down, it's not going to be enough. And the rally being committed here. They're going to commit. to keep fighting this. They think that the pick off onto Fearless might be enough to try and win this one out. I suppose maybe with a health advantage, but they need to get a big EMP here. Naga needs to collect it onto so many targets straight up into the sky. He's going to find it. That's Repel finished. The positioning was just perfect from them. Can they get the other support? Yes! The coordination of Paris is fantastic. They easily convert onto that one. Great decision making in the middle of that fight. The call to invest the rally and go for that was perfect. Despite the fact that they were a player down. They've really been great at being able to turn these fights and realize when they have advantages. Especially considering how new the meta is. And this is what I'm talking about. Can you convert team fights into additional pressure and keep moving forwards? Because as soon as people get bogged down and there's all of this, uh, you know, Traces contesting the objective, then the ball, then the diva, it becomes very hard to actually advance the payload. Naga's been hacked here though. Peel required. <laughs> not, not that kind of peel. Oh no, what do you got? That's, yeah, I mean, okay, I'm pretty sure the desk is gonna have a field day with that one. I think a couple of reaction images gonna be brought about from it, but we'll see. Anyway, the fight continues, Sparkle with the Pulse Bomb, ready and waiting. Nice little Shield Bash actually, does force out that recall. But the forward positioning of the Pass Eternal has been completely denied here. Dallas Fuel running rings around them, just holding around to the high ground of Naga. Maybe the Translocator just destroyed there, unable to really escape out of this team fight. Dallas Fuel capitalizing off of it. They used Rally to be able to win that. Naga's getting close to his EMP. So the, these are the kind of big team fight ultimates that you want to keep track of. So to me now, it's really all about Repel. Does he have the reaction times to be able to adjust to this? We've seen a couple of huge performances. What is that from Khan as well? That is so... Khan kills both of the DPS for the Dallas Fuel. I mean, he's coming alive. The Transcendence, it's just a bit of a bonus at the end of it. He's like, okay, I suppose I'll dish out a bit of healing as well. He wants a bit more. Of course, he's going to be leading in the damage here. Transcendence coming through for them. He's right in the front lines. He's practically a DPS at this point. Layering in volley after volley, the damage is immense, and now he's obtained the high ground control. And we all know from the prequel films, so, so important. You never want to give that one up too easily. Still, the Dallas Fuel battling back onto the staircase. It's such a scrappy engagement right now. Any side could be winning it. Fearless just trying to zip his way out of there, needs to try and survive. But it looks like the Paris Eternal have wrangled control for now. With Dallas throwing everything into that team fight, they make Naga scared. Naga decided to pop EMP. It only caught onto Hanbin. It was pretty useless. That was he might as well have manual hacked Hanbin, but he felt like it was necessary to be able to turn the team fight around. And that ultimate being wasted for Paris might be what the Dallas Fuel needs. What a stick! Rappel goes down. Oh my God, is absolutely destroying right now. The mines into the back. Darn as well, just causing havoc, trying to sink it up the back line of the Dallas Fuel. They're gone, they're out of this fight, and Onigod almost getting the one clip as well onto his opposition. Finishing with the 13 seconds left, obviously just under a minute, meaning that the Dallas Fuel are also going to be awarded that one minute to compete. Well, Onigod may have killed himself with the previous pulse bomb, but that one was fantastic. A r really good individual play to be able to push them across the line because the ult was not looking great for them. Uh, they needed a big play like that to get across the line. They only had 30 seconds as they got to the final point and momentum was not particularly in their favor. Great work from them. Both of these teams just happy to scrap it out, invest into team fights that look like they're lost. I'm loving it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, it's interesting watching this... Uh... I suppose it's a meta game that we that we knew was going to be probably the dominant one, just off the back of the APAC teams playing a lot yeah, of it, a lot of these wrecking ball comps. So we're no stranger to it, but I think the question mark in my mind was you know, how well is the Western region going to be able to uh, de be able to deal and adapt to all of this and these shots? That was why the transcendence was used. It was just a bit of a reaction to the pulse one going through, but the shots that he's hitting That's so are good. That is actually fantastic. That, that, that's Ooh. a great play. And I think now is a good time, now that we have a pause, to kind of consider the question, what is, what's Rappel doing for the Dallas Fuel? How good it, does his performance look? And to me, he's had some moments that looked a little questionable. I mean, it's very understandable, but like, for example, that one team fight where he, uh, he got spooked a little bit and Naga came out of stealth. He ends up forcing the transcendence, sets the Dallas Fuel back a little bit. 
He hasn't had the same explosive moments as Khan. You know, that kind of stuff has not really been there. But he's been, you know, getting the Discord orbs out. He hasn't been dying too much. He hasn't been a liability in the back line. And I think that's all the Dallas Field really needs from somebody in that back position. At least when they're facing off against the the middle of the pack kind of teams. Maybe once we get to the elite level, Rappel will have to step it up a bit or will showcase that he has more to give. But early days, this seems this seems fine. Yeah, certainly early days to trying to figure it out. I believe that the past eternal, the ones who uh, call for the pause, I think it's Naga, whose uh, system has broken down. I'm not too sure. It might be why we're not seeing the, uh, the face cam here. So we'll try and get a bit more information as well as to find out exactly what's going on here. But yeah, I mean, Khan is one of the uh, one of the only people who's had his PC on the Paris Eternal side. I mean, what a performance from him. And we knew that this kind of meta was going to be good for him as well. Very kind of individual focused, I think, for the flex support role when you're playing the Zen and the Ana. Uh, you know, yeah. especially when you, you're, you're constantly being hounded by the Tracer players, you know, the, the Sombra players. It can give you these small little pop-off moments. I mean, he is just going to be, I think, over the course of the Countdown Cup, just farming up the clips, you know what I mean? I mean, we're going to be seeing, I think, a lot of this guy. Absolutely. I completely agree. The only question mark in my mind about Khan is, does he sometimes take too aggressive positions to be able to make those kind of plays happen? Absolutely. I think what we've seen so far from this season is that Khan can some sometimes compromise his own positioning in order to try and get more value in the fights. And against good teams, you will get punished for that sometimes. But when you're playing Zen rather than BAP, there's occasionally moments where you can just skill it and make it work for you. And that situation right there, as Sparkle comes forward into the back line with a pulse bomb, that's one of those moments where his individual skill just just erases any positional problems that he might have had in that moment. Uh, so as long as Khan can make sure he's not not in cuckoo land with where he's actually positioning himself and the rest of the back line, and as a result, he, he's going to be fine. He's going to farm. We got the game underway. That was a volley from Khan that almost just took out Rapal, by the way. He was on about three health, I think. Almost took him out at the start. Almost just seeing the Zenyatta difference that we were talking about. A little bit there. Yeah. He has been looking for those. He found one earlier on as well. That when he was spawn camping, he just destroyed Rapel coming out of spawn. Yeah, the guy is, uh, is an absolute monster. Well, Dallas with only 30 seconds left. The difficult thing about this composition is that it doesn't give you much in the way of trying to win these team fights out with, without much time to set up. Yeah. Dallas Fuel You're looking really for a manual here. Yeah, and here we go, the power driver engaged, but look at this! Rappel push into the corner. Naga with the perfect positioning, just into the back as well, in that back corner, peppering away with the SMG. Only got still alive as well, now looking to try and sync something up with that hack onto Fearless. Oh, Fearless I mean, hack. It's curtains. It has to be done by this point. They've already lost way too many players. It's going to take some heroics from Sparkle and Doha if they want to try and win this one out. Look at the difference in, in Transcendence building, the damage done in this team fight. Rappel was picked off really early on. Fantastic position from Naga. He got a great hack straight afterwards too. And Khan has just been farming the whole time. If this team fight ends up going long, Khan didn't pop it. He, I don't think I don't think he was hacked in that instance either. Oh he just my. chose not to invest it. And no oh way, my. no possibility. You've got to be kidding me. DMP into the back. It does connect, connect onto Doha there. Possibly enough to take him out still. The possibility is here. Spark with the post bomb. He's managed to maybe get this kill on the tree drop. And look at this. <laughs> Rappel with the shots. Onigod's taken out. The overtime burning. It matters not for the Dallas Fuel. Cool, calm, and collected. Oh my word. Winning out this team fight now. Of course, Pass is going to be dumping the bodies onto the point. Just trying to basically keep this one going. Transcendence used by Rappel here. Actually, as well as Khan, who was just waiting around the corner. They're going to try and stay onto this point, but I don't think they've got the damage to burst through all these support ults that Dallas are offloading. And that's just the clutch power of the Dallas Fuel. That was ridiculous. Sparkle coming alive there, having such impact in the middle of the team fight. And I think crucially as well, Doha being able to pressure down Khan and Khan choosing not to invest his trance. He chose to trance as Vestola was getting demacked instead when they went for a recon test. Paris do not have the composure in these clutch scenarios that the Dallas Fuel do, and that's what's making the difference here on Blizzard World. Otherwise, the teams are neck and neck, but Dallas are so much better in the clutch. Another pulse bomb, Sparkle sends it straight into the back! Khan, it didn't stick, but it was laid down onto the ground. And that's a pick, nevertheless. Still, one for one. Doha ends up going down the mines onto the point as well. Hammond's just trying to clear them out as they push this steadily forwards. You gotta remember was these overtime spawn kicking and Doha still hasn't respawned. Rappel goes down though. 
an opportunity now for the Paris Eternal, especially as the backline of both Jexa and Rappel are gone. No more healing for them. There'll be a lack of support for it. The self destruct over the top, just blocking out of the line of sight there. So Naga's staying alive, but eventually clearing them away from the objective, just stopping them before they really got out of control of it. You could say before they got out of control, but considering there was a minute on the clock, it almost feels like they they let it go too far. I'm not sure that the Paris Eternal are going to be able to match that. Yeah. This seems like Dallas have, have clutched a victory on a map where you could argue Paris were uh, playing the better Overwatch for the majority of this map. It's the small things that have fallen to pieces for Paris. Uh, towards the end of... Uh, ch their checkpoint A defense the first time around. They let it slip through their fingers and then just kind of could never hold on with the momentum afterwards. Um, they felt like the same kind of mistake there again. Paris were absolutely set up with an advantage and now there is so much pressure on this European squad to be able to put up a similar performance to the fuel. This is going to be really difficult. With a minute and 13 seconds when you have to set up the positioning really well. I mean, you you need, like, essentially ultimates, really, is, see, is generally how you, this composition works to, to open things up, unless you get the manual hacks. This was how to close out the team fight. This is just, I guess, pushing the supports into uncomfortable positions here. Able to clean yeah. up pretty yeah. easily you enough. You can see as well that the ball yeah, and Tracer, Dan and Onigod. Dan and Onigod were pressuring Jexa from the front, so he couldn't turn around and help propel. Um, he just had to hold up his shield. He couldn't give him any of the armor packs at any point. But all right, now the pressure is on the Eternal run. And a lot of eyes on Naga. He needs to set up some of these neutral hacks to try and get just a small window of opportunity for his team to try and uh, try and work off. You can see they're trying to push Dallas off the high ground for now, but already being brought down to 45 seconds. This is going to go to probably to an overtime team fight. Sparkle, very, very dangerous positioning here, but knows exactly how to play it just on the line. Naga still looking for that hack. Yeah, just going for the hacks, hoping that someone from the Dallas Fuel is going to push into his line of sight. I mean, this is such dangerous positioning. They're trying to push into the back line. That's only God setting it up. I think with Dan as well. Dan sacri sacrifices his life for the cause there. Bit of a one for one, but now they can start when to get know, some point pressure in. on the board. Naga has actually managed to spot Doha, is forced out to translocate. They're going to get this d -Mech possibly as well. Hambin is in a very dangerous situation. They do. Still looking for these opportunities, but the Dallas Phil are the ones who have crumbled here. Yeah, they were looking for a recontest and they just didn't find the right opportunity to do so. Perhaps if they'd thrown their bodies in there as well, they might have extended the team fight for long enough for Naga or Khan to feel like they wanted to pop an ultimate. Because now there is an opportunity for a snowball. Again, eyes on Naga here. He is 25% ahead of Doha when it comes to that EMP race. If they find a quick opportunity to go for that, that is exactly the momentum that they're looking for. Naga oh, yeah. coming up behind him. He's got more back line. Here he goes. He's found it straight away, and that's the kill onto Rappel. That's what he was looking for. The setup is there, but Dan does go down as well. Trying to follow up on a lot of that damage that was being done. Now remember, it's the overtime team fight. The spawn times are going to start to get long here. Both teams just looking to try and take this team fight. The Dallas Fuel are going to be waiting to the very final moment to try and contest this car, but they need to keep this going from the Paris Eternal side. Sparkle with the pulse bomb. He's been spotted. He's been forced into the corner there. Has to try and grab him, but now the EMP connects Khan. Ready and waiting. Has the transcendence. The heels are there, but Sparkle with the pulse bomb. Wonderful stick. Drew goes down. The D-Mech as well. The damage just sweeps through them. And now with Naga just trying to basically follow up this team fight in any possible way that he can. Okay. It's probably going to be too little too late. Only a couple of players left standing. The Paris Terminal unable to close out that team fight. That's the Dallas Fuel taking away Blizzard World. What a close back and forth so far. Yeah, this match has had everything. Uh, I mean, both of these teams are neck and neck. It feels like Paris are often playing the more, I, I don't know, the, the, the better they, it feels like they have the better individual play at certain times, and then the Dallas Fuel's understanding of playing these clutch scenarios, these overtime situations, is far superior. Because you saw even in that final moment, when Naga gets an EMP on Jexit and Rappel, 
and both of the backline players die for the Dallas Fuel. The rest of Dallas doesn't allow themselves to get Snowball. They scatter to the four winds, waiting yeah. for their players to come off respawn and ready to attack. It makes it really difficult for Paris to take those couple of kills and snowball it into a whole team fight victory. Dallas will just not let you do that. And that is a fundamental skill that translates across all metas. And it's just something that the championship teams in Overwatch understand. The series really, really heating up between both of these teams now. We're gonna go do a short break on the other side of things. We're gonna see, really, if it's gonna go the complete distance all the way to map five, I certainly hope so. We'll see you in just a few, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. The Overwatch League is brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheese It Grooves. So much flavor, it's a mind crunch. And by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League. Over 2 million picks have been made so far this season, and a new tournament means a new bracket is unlocked. So can you get the perfect bracket for the Countdown Cup? Go to pick'em.overwatchleague.com 
to submit your picks for this this week's matches. Uh, I almost forgot this morning. Josh, did you forget? Oh, always. Every single week. <laughs> every every month. Uh, never, uh, never remember. And I always look at the pickup site and I'm like, oh, I should have done that. Um, so yeah, that's that's my life. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, well, honestly, though, I, I can't tell you who I would have predicted for this game. I was absolutely torn. It feels like, you know, historic value, you should go with the Dallas Fuel, but it just all of the pieces feel right for a Paris upset today. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I had this down as a 3-2 to Dallas Fuel, but I, I'm the exact same thought process. I am really quite torn in terms of which direction this, this series really might go. Um, yeah, it's, it's intriguing, isn't it? Let's take a look at this. The next map coming up, it's uh, it's Havana, uh, which is obviously in the pool. Interesting that Havana usually kind of facilitates, I guess, like, especially in the West, teams playing rush compositions or the double shield. Well, Sigma's not in the hero pool rotation, so probably not going to be seeing the double shield uh, unless they're playing it with some some other weird element. Arissa Ryan? Um, you don't think yeah, we get Arissa that? Arissa Ryan comps? I don't, I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, but uh, yeah, probably going to be sticking with the same that we've seen. A lot of this wrecking ball comps across the board already. This series potentially really getting stretched out. It's been a long series so far. I mean, we're only two maps in. It's 1-1. One, one. And it already feels like there might be some kind of fatigue factor setting in if we end up going to five. These maps yeah. have been long, drawn-out affairs. The team fights are scrappy and chaotic with a lot of individual prowess maybe make, being the deciding factor, um, along with you know the positioning and rotations of, of the back line in particular. Havana's... I, I'm interested to see what people pick here on Havana, honestly. I think there's still some room, maybe, for trying Arissa compositions. I don't know that we're going to be stuck with this uh, Ball Zen Tracer comp the entire way through. I think there is a little bit of room for maneuverability. Uh, and this is one of those where I think it's possible. There's more options for long range hit scan, especially on point A. That tends to favor the Orisa. You, we've still seen teams play some Orisa Diva so far this year um, with like a back Brig backline, for example. It doesn't look like either of these teams are going to go for it, but I think we might see a little variety. Uh, the potential's there. Uh, you never really know uh, what teams are going to be running. <laughs> I love this little factoid. Eternal won all three of their matches against the Fuel in 2020. But that was mostly the Dallas Fuel's current players. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's interesting to think about, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. If you can't the way, beat them, uh, join them. The way franchising works, I guess. Sometimes you get interesting little facts like that. Uh, yeah, here we go. The teams are rolling out. There's not going to be any uh, interesting or different compositions being ran uh, when it comes to like the Orisa that we might have been speculating that sometimes you do see on Havana. The teams are going to be sticking to what they've been playing this entire time. Going for the neutral hacks. See both Naga and Doha searching for it. This time Dan taken out. Dan, first death in a lot of these fights. Uh, and I think a big part of it as well is just trying to set up and follow up on a lot of the damage that uh, Onigod and Naga are doing. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's playing a very sacrificial style. He's not really prioritizing his own life in these circumstances. He's very much going in for the rest of the team. And he, he's got these big slam engages, soaking up a lot of the damage and the aggression, hoping that Onigod Naga, maybe even Pistola, if Pistola's going aggressive, can finish the fight off. I don't think that's the style of ball that's going to become the most prevalent, but it might work for some teams. This payload is being slowed to a crawl as they're just popping in and out. Just really stalling it up here at the initial choke point. Naga's searching for a, a neutral hack. It is a struggle though. It is difficult when he is just being spammed out of it constantly. All this damage coming his way. And it's it does so feel important. like Dallas Hill have such a strong choke hold here on it. Now the EMP comes through. It's going to connect onto a couple of targets, but that's what they were looking for right there. Sparkle lets loose that pulse bomb. Doesn't really get too much done with it, but eventually Roll forwards as that was Dan pushing him into the back line, takes him out still. Khan available, ready and waiting, just again pumping in those volleys from afar and only go with the pulse bomb. That is quite tasty. So that's the recall what as well. Gonna be opting to use it, but yes, fantastic openings here from the past eternal to break through that. That's wild. I mean, they got EMP'd at the beginning of that, and they were still able to respond back. And now Naga has his own EMP, the Paris Eternal can move forwards. Yeah, two minutes have been taken off the clock, but if Naga can get into a good position, and he has up towards the top right here, 
If they can... I mean, Rappel is the priority target. Here I am. Yeah, he's hunting for him. I find him. Oh, he I thought he might have been there. Right. Yeah, Onigod goes down. That is unfortunate. Not sure a Dallas Fuel fan, though. He's probably going to be screaming at your television. And that is going to be a lovely kill onto Naga. Still, the transcendence comes out there from Rappel. Just a little bit concerned, I think, of what might be coming his way. I think I'll have to dodge the EMP as well that Naga offloaded. And right in close quarters is where they're going to be opting to take this team fight. Possibly the worst section as well of the map to be losing that team fight for the Paris Eternal, considering oh, how yeah. close they were to pushing this. And now with a minute left, it's hard. It's almost looking like a full hole. There's a minute left. We know that these team fights have been going extremely long, and Dallas Fuel have a lot of big ultimates to be able to work with. Uh, both teams have a single support ultimate. The rally is excellent as well. It's not that much worse than the tracks. Fearless hack. That would be a great first pick for the Paris Eternal to get. That could get them into things, but he's managed to escape. And obviously, Doe has EMP. And also, Sparkle's pulse bombs have been phenomenal. Decoder onto Doe. Oh, okay. Khan almost dodging and juking around the pillars there. The doorway, just about to find it, but only got straight Sparkle away. Hacked. That's another answer. Sparkle hacked as well, trying to turn this one around, but the Dallas Fuel come back with one of their own. It's already going their way, just about. Naga has to back off around the way. Well, out of this team, high falling very low. That self-destruct cannot be avoided. Rappel just charging up the volley instead of just prioritizing his life. Wasn't able to get to safety there. Still, the Dallas Fuel want to try and push them away from this team fight. With 15 seconds remaining, the Paris Eternal will start. Starting to really get back into this one. And Khan, you can see him just pumping in the damage again. Holding on to the Transcendence with the Mines straight off on the ground and the Self Destruct. He's going to be using that Transcendence now to clear up as many Mines as possible. Rappel comes in with a bit later on. Big power drive from Fearless. Catches onto a couple of them, but they need some form of follow up. That's the whip shot. Naga taken out. Hambin Dmeg, though, could be going either way, especially if only got clutches. Big kill onto Naga. He was about to get up to his EMP. Dridro keeping the rest of his team alive, buying time for Naga to get back as Hanbin gets demacked here as well. Another good play by Dridro to be able to get that bash. Whip shot as well, takes down Doha. Oh, Dridro is doing so much in the middle of this fight. And Sparkle, Sparkle. eventually takes him down. EMP! Oh, it's massive at the end. EMP just catches onto the targets, just about to close this one. Looking a bit dangerous, honestly, especially with Khan going down in the middle of that team fight at the end. They really did do very well to try and. Uh, consolidate, I guess, a lot of their picks there, with Dredro leading the charge, whipping around the flail. And they have yeah. been awarded with two minutes here, Josh. And now Havana gets very different. This stage of the map is much more close quarters, combined. But with these team compositions, it just offers more opportunity to get your Tracer, your Sombra, into positions. Here's an EMP. Yeah, no engage over the top, respond. that's Khan! Taking him out, and Sparkle with a post bomb! He lets it rip right round the corner, that's both Khan and Darn going down. Nowhere to run when uh, you're in that kind of scenario. In fact, Sparkle going to be opting to try and win out the Tracer 1v1 as well while he's at it. He's going to be making do just for Stola though for the time being, and a minute 30, high ground position gained here by the Dallas Fuel. They can choose when to engage into this next fight. Sparkle's pulses have been phenomenal. He's built up to 70% of his next pulse. And he just keeps going for targets that are hacked, discorded. So he's coordinating with the rest of his team. He's not just going for random pulse bomb targets. He's going for big, high impact plays. Telling you, man, needs to be in the MVP discussion. He's been integral for the success of the Dallas Fuel over the course of this season. He's doing it on a roll that initially he was looking a bit uncomfortable on. Definitely. Love to scratch. The mine's going to get cleared here. Has another post bomb in hand. Looking for the next target, but just seeing if he can follow it up. Almost catching onto the Stola, but just about missing it. Down to 50 seconds now. Not going to get close to EMP, but this it's going to be so difficult to be able to get in a good position for this one. And Repel has the trance. It, there it is. Repel uses Transcendence. No idea what that was about. I think probably, again, Naga coming out of stealth, baiting it out of the Dallas Fuel's backline Zen player. So that That's puts Dallas advantage. Fuel now in a catastrophic situation. They've given up oh. high ground control as well. <laughs> South destroyed into the back. That's Repel and Doha gone. Weren't really ready and waiting for that one. And at this point, Paris Eternal, I mean, they're well pleased with that, honestly. Going into 18 seconds, probably going to be an overtime push at the end, but they still have the Transcendence, they still have the EMP. So many tools to just really close out checkpoint B. These trances have been a little wonky from Repel. The more times it happens, the more times you have to wonder if it's going to be continuing. And now Naga, 30% ahead of Doha, could just close out checkpoint B for Paris. It's going to have to be an overtime. There it is. It only catches on to Fearless, though. Sparkle as well. Searching for that pick up. The Sparkle not able to get it off in time. 
just about. The hack fading away, gets the recoil going, and that's Dan going down in this fight still. Transcendence being used. Repel onto the high ground, and that's the pressure. As Vistola is going to be jumping on him, not letting him get a lot of that work done up onto that high ground position. The way this team fight's going, it looks like the Paris Eternal are going to be able to squeak it out with the investment of those ultimates. So they are going to find checkpoint B with a minute 30 as well, now pushing into one of the more difficult sections of Varna as well when you get into this long stretch. Dallas Fuel with the ultimates now flipped onto the other side of things. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, weird positioning from Repel. I assume he was just coming off uh, forward spawn and was trying to retreat to the rest of his team, then got caught. But okay, Intriguing. that's not going to really change things too much. These long sight lines mean a lot of the responsibility is in the Zenyatta's hands. This is Khan, Repel, their opportunities to go crazy. Well, that's Khan. The target, the priority here is they do focus him down. Nice little pulse there off onto the side as well. Dredro had to shield bash just away from the rest of his team to avoid any more collateral damage, but matters not. The team fight's already over. It's already done. With 40 seconds left. Paris is desperate to try and build up maybe some of these ultimates here. The trouble is they're still at a big disadvantage. And these ults are going to be difficult to get value out of as well. They're all kind of close quarter ultimates. The Rally and the uh, Transcendence require you all to be bunched up together. Naga's EMP requires your opponents to be bunched up together. This area of the map is very spread. There's a hack though onto Onigod as well. Seeing if they can isolate the Tracer player for the Paris Eternal and take him out of the fight early. It's not going to be the case though. Nice hack onto Fearless. So going to stop Fearless from rolling through his team. And this time, it's going to be another overtime fight. Slowly does it. That's the EMP. It's going to clear up a lot of the mines. Catch on to a couple of people. That's Doha off the edge. The whip shot from Dredro. Environmental kill. Couldn't translocate out. Transcendence to lead it forwards as well. They've got the damage and the healing. Oh, God. With the pulse bomb. Just cleaving through them once more. I've been desperate to try and clutch this one up. But with the overtime going... Not ideal for them as well. These spawns are going to be coming in brutally slow. Probably going to be a three capture for them. Assuming that the Paris Tunnel are able to at least focus down these remaining players. Fearless hacked up onto the point. Jexa just trying to ready and wait around here. Self-destruct over to the top of the EMP. No one really there to follow it up. But now the spawners are coming back in from Dallas. Can they stay alive? It's not looking likely the way the Paris Tunnel are playing. Doomfist into the back. Sparkle desperate to clutch it, but immediately removed them with the mines onto the point. Oh, yeah, good luck getting close to it whatsoever. Three checkpoints there for the Paris Eternal. A job well done, all things considered. Stopped it many, many times throughout the course of Varna. Yeah, and the rest of Paris look focused, determined. They know their job is not done, but that's a fantastic push. Really well performed there as well. Keeping all of that momentum flowing. Yeah, they nearly got first point held, but they managed to engineer themselves an advantage. They forced their way through, and then they looked really stable for the rest of it. The Dallas Wheel had their opportunities to be able to get back into that game, but just picked off too early on. And I, I do want to give a lot of credit here to Dredro too. He was phenomenal in that final fight towards the end of Checkpoint A as Paris capped, keeping yep. people alive with the rally, being able to shut people down, got a bunch of different kills, just playing up at the front, buying time for Naga to come off the spawn. And then in that final team fight we just watched at Checkpoint C, he got the whip shot onto Doha. Doha was at 80% of his EMP. If you don't isolate that kill and Dallas are able to keep a long, extended, drawn out team fight, you're going to be facing a, a global silence in like 10 seconds. What a play from the Brigitte on the Paris Eternal. I don't feel like we've talked too much about Dredro so far this season, other than saying that he was a very serviceable replacement. But Paris have leveled up since adding him and Vestola to the team. Yeah, uh, yeah, serviceable feels like a bit of an understatement, I think, for Dredro. His impact has been incredibly noticeable as soon as he joined the yeah, roster. Uh, and yeah, carrying forwards, I suppose, the hopes and dreams of European contenders, Tier 2 as well. These players have come up from that uh, that side of things. Definitely a scene that's been underappreciated over the years. See what they can do with the Dallas Fuel on the attacking side, though, now. And it is... <laughs> okay, that I mean, close. that was almost like a jump scare. Sparkle's still able to get out of that one, though. I guess the volley just about missed him. In fact, Naga was the one who went down. Sparkle unable to chase that kill onto Dan, even though Dan fell very, very low. But don't worry, Fearless is on the case. Brought him down. And now with the Paris Eternal all collapsed into this corner. Oh, yeah, it's happy days for them. Onigod still gets the better of him with the beat down there. Still looking for a little bit more, almost, with that kill onto Rappel. 
Staying alive right around the corner, zipping, zooping around, but finally brought down. Very different positioning from the back line. When you saw the Dallas Fuel defending on that corner, they were playing on the staircase that goes upwards, you know? They were trying to keep high ground, have ways of rotating. Paris Eternal played in the basement there, and Khan was just stuck in a corner the whole time, taking really AoE it. damage from slams, from the D.Va, uh, kind of booping through it. So, a bit of a positional mistake there, I think, from the back line of Paris. And the target goes down again. Isolated a lot, I think, off the back of these hacks and Discord targets. As much as the individual mechanics of the Dallas Fuel sometimes has been lacking over the course of the series, their coordination has not. Take him out. That's a nice little neutral hack and that sparkle, unable to blink away. Khan immediately going to be appropriating that one. Look at that. Beautiful work. Pulse Bomb comes through, but shutting down Onigod, unable to really make much else happen with it. The EMP stretching across them now. The Transcendence Repel wants to keep the team alive. That's no a remake kill. First one of the Countdown Cup. Doha falls in the middle of all of this with these very mobile compositions. That's probably going to be a rare one. I don't think you're going to be seeing that as often these days. Still, the Dallas Fuel on the attacking side want to take this team fight further forward. Strija with the rally, keeping his team up now, applying armor to everybody. But with the mines scattered across the point, what can anybody do? The Dallas Fuel just have to wait and back off for the time being. They can't even touch this point to keep this one going, especially with Fearless falling. It's Dredro again. The Dallas Fuel overlaid their support ultimates. Repel and Jexa both popped their ults at the exact same time. And that meant that the Paris Eternal could save their rally, use it to be able to stabilize, and they win that team fight just based off of that. Uh, for all the criticism I was giving them in terms of their slight positioning mistake earlier, that was much better play compared to the Dallas backline. And they've managed to weather the storm of EMPs, pulse bombs, all of that stuff for the Paris Eternal to now be in a good position to potentially full hold. Khan has again got ahead of Repel when it comes to Transcendence building as well. Oh my god. He's 20% ahead. Yeah, built up this pulse bomb. Khan's pumping in the damage, has it. Okay, going to be dropping it straight over their heads. Not connecting onto exactly who he was looking for, but almost getting the kill there onto Doha anyway. Still looking for the neutral hacks. Rapal's just hiding around the corner. He's a little bit worried about being uh, pushed out of position here. It's a long and slow approach here from both of these teams. Vistola sends in the South Destruct to try and force the positioning. Vistola hacked though! Unable to get into the mech! But the Transcendence was forced in the back line of the Dallas Fuel as well. Repel felt, ne felt it necessary there to use his own trance. Darn dies for it. That's that sacrificial Wrecking Ball play that we've we've seen so often. And Naga dies. Khan can't save him with the Transcendence. And this has been a bit of a flump from both sides. He's just going to have to escape. Yeah, Sparkle 3 HP in a dream does not have the recall. Just about got it offline. The recontest they comes through. This. The Paris Eternal. Tweet throw again. They absolutely turn this. Onigod comes through. The post bomb connects off onto the side. Fearless goes down. The amount of rally armor now that's going to be afforded over here to the Paris Eternal. Nine seconds remaining. I mean, the Dallas Fuel thought that that one was in the bag. But Dredro turning it around with the ultimates again. The clutch plays. Dredro, 30% of Jexa when it comes to rally generation. He's able to get that ultimate so much quicker, and that is the difference maker. What? Dredro, what a map. That is an unbelievable performance, honestly, from Dredro. I mean, we've been singing the, the, the praises, I think, of a lot of individual players on either of these teams in terms of their impacts over the course of it. You know, Khan at times, but that map in particular, 100% was Dredro. What a play. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's wild. It can definitely fly under the radar for sure. And there are a bunch of other factors as to why the Paris Tunnel looked better there. But it only makes a, a small difference. That checkpoint AF Havana is so treacherous as an attacking team to try and get through. And you saw the Paris Tunnel nearly stumble when they were on their own attack side. And they just managed to muscle through. The big difference there is in the back line. It's in terms of Dredro being able to save his rallies and build them up much faster. And then Khan not having his trance forced out at random occasions. Repel definitely looking a little shaky when it comes to his ults. Well, we're going to be going to a short break now. We're going to see one map away for the Paris Eternal upsetting the Dallas Fuel. Are we going to see it happen or are we actually going to be going to the map five? We're going to be finding out soon enough just after this one, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. You know, you don't want to miss it. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Do you think you're the best dancer in the Overwatch League? No. Who do you think is better? Curious. Are you better? Oh, uh, Winston test no. Best. Winston. Winston test best. No. no. Oh, oh, best. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't. Oh, I can't. Oh, oh, I can't. Oh, oh, no, 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 This is a special edition of the Xfinity Roundtable. I am joined by some of the Dallas Fuel players. Very recently, your team got to play in front of your fans. Uh, you went back to a, a watch party slash homestand, like a kind of a love child of the two of them. What was that like to actually play in front of a crowd once more? 오랜만에 그냥 팬분들 앞에서 경기를 하니까 제 내면에 있는 다른 놈이 또 다시 깨어나더라고요. 그래가지고 도화영이랑 그 시작 전에 춤췄는데 예, 도화영이 춤을 같이 추자고 했는데 먼저 못 추는 거 보고 야, 빵댕이 한번 시계 때릴 뻔 했습니다. I mean, I was very impressed with your dancing skills. It looked very good. Do, do you have other moves as well? Like we saw two different moves yet. Yeah. Do you have something else? 영환이 옛날에 겐지 때 겐지 춤. 아, 겐지 춤 엄청 많이 춰는데. 겐지 춤. 아, 하나, 하나. He had to. 마디 마디, let's go. 오. <웃음> 어떻게 하더라? 아, 왜 좋잖아. 아, 진짜. 아, 진짜. 아, 진짜. 아, 아, Welcome back from the break, everybody. And yeah, we are in a little series here to Dallas Fuel versus the uh, the Paris Eternal. And it's looking like a potential upset early on in the Countdown Cup, honestly. <laughs> the first match back as we're heading into the uh, the tournament cycles. And yeah, one map for the Paris Eternal to take it. And I will say they have definitely, uh, over a you know, select courses, I suppose, of this, uh, of this series. I mean, they've looked like the better team mechanically in terms of how they're using their ultimates as well in the back line. Dallas still coming to grips about how to play this meta, really. I would definitely agree with that. I mean, sure, I don't think the Paris is not playing perfect Overwatch right now. I don't think anyone would look at this match and argue that they are. But at the beginning of a meta like this, it's about getting the basics down, right? It's about getting uh, to grips with the important themes of your composition faster than your opponent. And I would argue that they have in a lot of scenarios. The back line looks rock solid, has come up with some fantastic plays at various times. Uh, Onigod is stepping up against his former team. He's been caught out first in a bunch of these team fights, but he's also had some huge moments. And Naga's been consistent throughout it all, uh, getting more impact, weirdly, than Doha. And Doha is somebody that is world-renowned as a top Sombra player. If anybody was going to step up in this meta now that it's Sombra Tracer, to me, it should be Doha. And I haven't really seen that from him throughout this series. It feels like Naga's getting the better end. And that is the part to me that's the most surprising. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's uh, intriguing over the course of the season. Uh, or, you know, I suppose, uh, you know, Doha would be associated with it's the better Sombra player, but uh, in this... I mean, that's little... his whole career, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but in this series itself, um, it's been going in a, in a pretty different direction, honestly. We're heading over to Anubis now, which is... Uh, it's a map that, you know, I always point out that we see a variety of different compositions onto this. But, I mean, if we are only seeing the Wreckable comps up to this point, I'm pretty much inclined to think that we're probably not going to be seeing anything too different. I think both these teams are very dead set on running the Wreckable compositions around, a lot of the Sombra play, possibly the Far, honestly, that could come into play here. Um, yeah. We've seen both these teams kind of just opt into it at times. Yeah, and we've seen the APAC teams run Farah when it came to the Summer Showdown, and I would expect it to be uh, something that the team's going to opt for on Anubis as well. We've also seen the Shanghai Dragons try and run some of the Orisa comps on this map too. Yeah, and very good point. I, I, again, I think once people get more comfortable with the meta, they will be trying a range of different stuff. And, and Okay, let's take a look at this, uh, this replay as well from Havana. This is one of those scenarios we were talking about where Repel pops his trance because of Naga coming out of stealth. And in this scenario, look at Naga's charge. He's only at 87%. These are the kind of plays that Naga keeps making that are successful against Repel, a player that hasn't been played since week oh, two. Wow. 
that oh, just wow. aren't the same. I mean, that is just such great coordination from Paris. Faking the MP, force the trance, push to take high ground control, back the back line up into a corner, execute with ultimates. That's, that's perfection. It really is. Didn't even see the set play there. The power driver into the south destruct at the end. Yeah, so good. I mean, that's it's fantastic from Paris. And we and we do have something different here. Dan is going to start out on Winston. That incentivizes Fearless to move over to the Winston too. And the Dallas Fuel are running the BAP. Uh, sorry, not the BAP. The Anna Break backline. So Dallas going very much for stuff that's in their comfort zone as we head here. And that might have been the game plan all along. You know, the coaches may have said, we're going to start. We're going to be playing some ball comps. We're going to try and do stuff. But if the series looks like it's going out of your control, swap back to what you're comfortable with. We don't know, really, whether this was a set um, set strategy, a set composition that they were always going to run on Anubis, or whether this is a mid-match adaptation. But the fact that Dan is also playing Winston, to me, indicates that Winston's still extraordinarily playable in this meta on Anubis. Especially around the, the Annas as well, build up the Nana boost. Nice and oh, quick, yeah. you can build the Primal Rage off of it, you can start cycling the ultimates. Really yeah, important. Yeah, we've seen it all Dallas season. Long. Exactly, yeah. And Dallas' comp has got so many different tools that you can do that with, with the EMP, uh, as well as the, the neutral games, I suppose, that you might see from it, but okay, that's... Now I'm gonna take it down, that's the beat down. They just eventually, straight up, just jump on them, and that's gonna be the, uh, the Fire and Mercy combo, removed from the fight. Nice and early on there, and this is the Dallas Fuel back, largening control, honestly, of uh, their destiny is what it feels like on the attacking side of things. Have to chase down on a god, but Hambin's having a fantastic time, honestly. Kilfi just lit yeah. up with his name. Yeah, any time the Dallas Fuel is able to play Winston comes, they're probably going to look amazing. The only question mark for me here is Rappel on Anna, right? That's the big difference, is that Rappel is playing Anna here, probably just in case Dallas get forced onto playing some ball comp and Zen at some point throughout Anubis. But it gives us another opportunity to see what the flexibility of Rappel looks like. Nana boost into the back. You know what that means? It's Primal Rage time almost, 82%. Khan falls. That's going to be a lack of heals now. Pass turn are not going to have that in their back pocket, I suppose. It's going to be the D-Mech as well. That's quite nice for them, but still, Naga's been putting in that constant pressure as well. Already built up the barrage just from the rockets being sent in, but this time space has been created. Feels going down, not ideal for them. Pistola falls as well. I mean, the Dallas Fuel are going to look to try and keep taking this fight further forwards. Nice little whip shot there, and the hack means that Dan actually can't get too much value out of this Nana Boost that was applied onto him. Very, very low. Just trying to build up this Primal Rage. He's hacked up again in the back line, and that's Nagas you offloading that barrage. I mean, it's just picture perfect play there from the Dallas Fuel. They knew exactly what was going on. That was fantastic. Shutdown of Darn. That stops him being able to contest. Dallas have yet to get their first tick, but it feels likely. Repel fallen, though, so one tick is probably the max that they're going to be able to receive here. Both players in the Dallas Fuel backline. Can the Paris Eternal hold on? Darn now coming back from the spawn with the Primal Rage. Might be able to block this up before Dallas get to 33. He's managed to get a D-Mech there onto Hanbin. Fearless, though, with Dredro down. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Dallas still looking to try and take this one. Want to go with the Pulse Bomb in hand. Hunting for an adequate target. They have just pushed them away. Was Sparko going down? Do they still want to play this? Postman's not going to be Surely hitting there. Not. Has to try and take I mean, out one of these tanks here. Dallas needs a back This on. is time to reset. Yeah, it's been time to reset probably for the last 20 seconds, but Dallas Field just continued fighting for it, hoping that they were going to be able to get over that 33% mark. Great play from Paris, though, to be able to hold on. Crucially, the kill onto Repel was the big difference maker. Once you got the Ana down, Dallas are lacking all of the heals, the Nana boost potential to close out team fights. But now they can come back in. Nana wants to Fearless, EMP's gonna be online. So many opportunities to win this fight. This barrage. Probably not gonna be used until last minute, but the Nana boost, though, <gasps> applied. Oh, shot. oh my goodness. Yep, that's a damage boost as well. I mean, Rappel just could not go anywhere. Barrage in close quarters. I mean, why not? Okay, just start styling. You have to turn it away, otherwise you're gonna end up taking yourself out. But they're there losing Hampton this, Brett. Right into him, and they are they're losing the fight. Oh, Fearless using that Primal Rage, already getting the value done, despite the fact that he got slept at the end there. Has to back off, though, just for a moment to go back with the rest of his team to try and build up these ultimates. They are so, so low. Nana boost again onto Fearless. So oh, this is this one. I've been just backing off right around the corner. It is a really weird team fight because the Paris Eternal are like, okay, but well, if you're going to dive into our backline, we'll dive into yours already. Splitting this team fight apart. Darn ends up using the Primal Rage with Repel gone. They've held it. 
Yeah, that was pretty horrible from Dallas, not gonna lie. Uh, when Fearless initiated, it was too early. The rest of Dallas weren't able to catch up to him. And so after da after Phyllis had taken damage there from Vestola, he jumped out as Doha EMP. That's perfect anti-synergy from the Dallas yep. Fuel. And at that point, you, I mean, the team fight's over. You can't win when there's no follow-up on the EMP. So they've they've wasted a whole ult cycle there, Dallas. It certainly looked like Paris had given them the opportunity. Paris had thrown themselves into the maw, but Dallas Fuel quite happy to respond with a throw of their own. It's a nice after straight into the back. Khan did not know which direction that was landing in, and that's the res denied as well. Sparkle, he jumped on it. He's immediately going to be reacting with a couple of big plays here. As you can see, the Dallas Fuel not willing to give this one up. Still pushing forwards. Unable to get a tick, but finally they are going to be rewarded with it. And with the picks they're getting, they're going to be getting it just a little bit more. Naga slept up. Oh, immediately woken up as well. Has the Nana boost though. Looking for a kill, but he's right down on the floor. Hacked up. The jetpack doesn't work, obviously, under those conditions. And still, Fearless, with the Primal Rage, just about failed, or fading at the end. He's already created the space necessary for his team to just collapse onto him. No one's going to be able to touch that, so the Dallas Fuel with 1 minute 38 on the board. Fearless and Hanbin, when they can play Winston Diva, are just freaks. I think, I mean, they're the best Winston Diva combo in the world. Uh, they're, they're, there's, there's no, there's no question about it in my mind. Hanbin is everywhere at the end of that team fight. He is everywhere. Naga came in with, uh, with a Nana boost. He's all over him. He just jumps on his head immediately. Oh, there's Tracer. Yep, no, no, no pressure. Oh, you've got a hack onto the Mercy. Yep, I'm also pressuring that. He's just hyper aware in terms of his spatial mapping. He knows where everyone is from the opponents on the battlefield, and so he's multi-purpose. With one boost, he's harassing the backline and then swinging back to be able to peel. Uh, the level of D.Va play is just unbelievable in the league now. It is, yeah. To be able to get all of that as well, when you... I mean, it's, you compare it to other games as well. You're not looking at, like, a, a top-down perspective where you can get an instant read of the battlefield. It, it's it's chaotic, you know? There's, oh, yeah. there's colorful effects all over the place. It's hard to, to oh, really yeah. intake a lot of that information. You've got all these different sound hey, cues. You've got your teammates screaming at you. It's, uh, I've got blinker vision when I play this game. I can't focus yeah. on. I can't even focus on one thing at once. But I certainly exactly. can't focus on 10, 12 things at once, which it feels like Hanbin does. Uh, yeah, we've all seen your gameplay, Josh. Don't players. need to tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, take a look at what Paris and Dallas are running here. So Dallas fuel as well, opting for the Farah defense, but putting fearless on the ball. So perhaps only willing to match the Winston, not play the Winston into the record ball. Yeah. Definitely reality here. These rockets from Naga are great, actually. I mean, obviously, you got to hit the two consecutive back-to-backs to get that kill, which is very difficult because the heals come through. And then you have to deny the Resurrect as well. But the pressure, look at that! Jexa, I don't know why Jexa was on the ground. I don't think there was a hack. Maybe it faded. So it didn't show I mean, the kill. No, no, oh, sorry, no, they no, don't no, have a sombra. being played. Yeah. What am I saying? He just drifted, he nonsense, drifted down to the floor. He, uh, he took a rocket and only got just finished it off. Really well played. Yeah. Just the coordination there. Able to get that I mean, kill. Hand bin again, though. Yeah, and on the high ground, this is multiple fights taking place in various sections of the map. Sparkle just doesn't have his pockets, so just wants to send in a couple of the damage, or a couple of the rockets, I should say. And the damage boosted up. There's the res coming through onto Hanbin. Back into the fight. It's a really, really prolonged fight. You can tell with these compositions as well that these teams are kind of uncomfortable in terms of the way of setting up these fights. I mean, you can't be as active and quick when you're trying to create opportunities compared to previous metas. That's, that's just unlucky. I mean, I mean, that's a fantastic fight. And the Bionade as well. Khan has absolutely destroyed Sparkle there. And so much, it's so high risk, high reward, giving the Nada boost over to Yafara. Either they win you the team fight single-handedly, or they get no value. Ah, well, off the back of that, deny the res as well. Wonderful work, and yeah, Khan setting it up with a sleep dart onto the nano boosted Farah, and it almost impossible shot, but somehow finds it. That has cracked Khan's, this wide open. Khan's a freak on the Ana and the Zen. He's so good. He, he's outplaying Rappel. I mean, he really is. And it's not like Rappel's having uh, an awful game by any means. Like, he's still serviceable. I can still understand the Dallas Field wanted to run it. But Khan looks, he looks next level. He really is having a huge performance. I'm amazed that Sparkle was able to do so much with Jexa dying as well. He still held on for quite a while, but they have so much of this time back left to expend 
five minutes on the clock for the Paris Eternal. They could win it right here if Naga gets a good, like, nano barrage or something like that. Naga has the barrage. You can see that they're trying to synchronize something. The nano boost onto Naga now. That's the rocket straight up close. The peel not quite there, but the EMP is. Locks him down to the ground with the Bionade on top of it. That's the counter barrage. Sparkle just comes out straight away. Going to be... Uh, putting in a ton of damage, Dredo and Naga just could not withstand it, and they're all caught into the corner here. Definitely a salvageable situation for the Dallas Fuel to try and win this one. Absolutely is. Yeah, it, and that's Sparkle making the huge play. He swaps over to Tracer now, which is going to free Jexer up to go over the brick. So it adds more stability to the back line, stops Onigod from being able to find very much value at all here. And remember that they always have these EMPs coming online. Paris are playing quite a slow composition. It's difficult to... Difficult to easily win the fight, but that is going to help. Huge early pick on Fearless. Sleep Dart. Ooh, South Destruct as well. Naga, 32 health. Just trying to survive. Doesn't take any damage there. Very, very lucky in the end of it. And these rockets as well. Look at that right around the corner. Rappel just trying to avoid it by jumping down into the staircase. But, yeah, not going to be happening. Still going to be falling. That's another great play. Rappel forced to dodge downwards instead of towards the spawn door. Sets him up in the sight line. That's my hand been eating up the pulse bomb. Still Doha falls, and now again oh. a great sleep dart. Fantastic. The nano boost on Tanaga taken out. He's got the, the boosters at least, so he's straight up into the air, but not enough to survive it. Paris Eternal with 90% in counting. I don't think they're going to be able to win this fight. They did get down back into it with the res, but Dallas Fuel have the spawn advantage with that D mech as well. They have won this team fight out, but Paris have just been slowly setting themselves up in a position that they just need one good team fight. Okay, and have you seen their game plan now? Naga moves over to Genji. So instead of, I was going to suggest moving Onigod or Naga, perhaps, oh onto my. the Sombra so that you can try and match the Sombra of Sombra. Instead, they're going for the Genji here. They're looking to build up a Nano Blade or just go for really hardcore dives. DMP onto three. Any follow up? That's fearless with the primal rage. He you know, doesn't he need help. magic with it. Yeah, he doesn't really need the help. But oh, look at this! The sleep dart saved right around the corner. Are they going to be able to get a kill here? Yes, they are! That is ridiculous. Buying it into it. Way this. too much burst damage. And you're right, Josh. Going now they're going to be looking to try and turn it. A bit of a slow comp in terms of the position that they can really take off of it. That's uh, a portal. How did Sparkle even get that? That was like up in the play. air. Yeah, he's, he's worked his way into a high ground position where Naga was not expecting him at all. Khan with another kill, though. Khan is just a beast in the back line of the Paris Eternal. He's making it very difficult for Dallas Fuel. But Dallas have double support ultimate available here and a self-destruct, which can be a great zoning tool. For Paris, it's about using these last two minutes to be able to build up a blade. Naga's taking it quite slowly, but he will get there eventually. It's difficult comp to do it against. Fearless now. He's got the nano boost. Applied onto him, searching for these kills into the back, and yeah, it sets it up nicely. Well, that's going to be Vestola also going down, most likely. Yep, tries to get the remake onto the Mega Health pack, but not enough to survive. A minute 30, Aston still haven't built up this blade, but that is what they're going to be looking for. That's their win con. It absolutely is. Naga should have it pretty quickly, and now it's all about the, the Nano Blade. So, Jexit has a rally. That's not going to help you against Nano Blade all the time. I mean, it can be useful in some scenarios, but you can absolutely be trying to burst through that. I'm more looking towards Doha. If he gets in position to go for a manual hack, or perhaps even looking at the positioning of the Dallas Fuel, they might want to jump aggressively here. Not a boost. Dragon Blade. The hack onto Khan. There it goes. They're trying to disrupt He the got timing. hacked! The blade he comes got... through. Yes, we didn't get the nano! What a fantastic play from Dallas. They knew the win condition was. As soon as they heard the Dragon Blade timing, the hack onto Khan. The nano is not there. The hack with the Vestola onto the high ground. Pushed away as well. Taken straight out of the mech fire by the whip shot. Now the EMP. It collapses onto them. 30 seconds remaining in the Paris Eternal. No closer, really, to try and win this one out. That is what you're running Doha and Sombra for. That's what you're expecting his experience to do for you. He finds the perfect opportunity there. And he was set up for it that whole time. He knew this is the team fight. They have the Nana Blade. My focus is Khan. I thought they were going to go for an aggressive dive. But no, that is just such an elite manual hack. Perfectly timed and coordinated. And now Paris wow. just have no hope. Yeah, Primal Rage onto it. Dan will be able to touch. That's the overtime going for them. Satisfact into the back line, the mines off around the corner. 
Ultimate's committed, but it seems like the Dallas Fuel are the ones who are really winning out this team fight. I'm going to try and clutch this one. But Jex are falling. I don't want to count it out just yet. Let's get a bit of mech to clear them away off of the objective, off of the point. Sparkle. Forced out the recall, but with Naga gone, only got falling. No more DPS now for the Pirates Eternal. They cleared off the point, and that's going to be a map on the board there for the Dallas Fuel, bringing it all the way, winning Anubis. It's... It almost looks like the most one-sided map of the series. You could argue that Havana was, if you look at the scoreline, but I think, considering how close both teams were at being full held on checkpoint A, I would argue that this map was absolutely the most one-sided. And part of the reason for that is that Fearless is able to go over to the Winston. They can play the Anna Brig backline in a number of those uh, team fights. Uh, Fearless only played ball for maybe like, what, a third, a quarter of the map in total? Yeah. And they just look like a different team. They outclass the Paris Eternal, uh, especially thanks to another great play from Doha. We were asking questions at the beginning of this map whether he was going to be able to live up to the hype. And he certainly did with that final play. Well, we're going to be heading to a short break in the final one for this series here as we're heading into map five between these two teams. We're going to find out just who's going to take it if the Dallas Fuel can continue to try and opt in to that Winston gameplay that's given them the edge. We'll find out soon enough, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
Wouldn't have had it anyway, going all the way to map five between these two teams. I mean, <laughs> my pick'em's certainly looking pretty good right now, honestly, that I threw together out of the indecisiveness, honestly, in terms of who I wanted or thought could win uh, this match. But it has gone all the way now as we're heading into our fifth and final map, uh, which, spoiler alert as well, is going to be Oasis between the Dallas Fuel and the Paris Eternal. No roster swaps in any uh, in any move. I mean, you wouldn't expect them coming out from Paris, but I was wondering whether we'd see Repel the entire time or whether there was going to be some kind of rotation happening here between Repel and Fielder. So that's intriguing, but Oasis offers many opportunities to play that Zen Brig backline. I think that's going to be the majority of what people are going towards. Um, uh, for the Dallas Fuel, they really did look like a different team whenever they could get Fearless over to the uh, Winston and pair it up with an Ana. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the most effective as we go into Oasis, especially considering that this match, to me, is less important than Dallas really getting to grips with the comp when it comes around to playoffs, grand finals. Uh, if you're a Dallas Fuel fan, you can afford to see your team lose this and still keep confidence that they're doing the right thing for the long term, I would say. But for Paris, every win at this point in the season is hyper important. They are 6-6, six and six, 500 on the season. No one really expected that coming in. They were expected to be one of the bottom teams in North America. Just be a little snack for all of the other top-level rosters that were competing for the title. But it hasn't gone like that. With some great roster changes, they have improved every single stage. And Brent, they went three and one last stage. So in order to improve again, they'd have to go four and zero. They, they got to win this final map. They'd love to, I think, against the Dallas Fuel, a team that most people, you know, pin at the very top of, uh, of North America when it comes to a lot of these teams. Uh, I think that'll be a fantastic way to start the Countdown Cup for them. And uh, yeah, a reminder, of course, as well, at the unavailable heroes for the Countdown Cup, Echo, Ash, Sigma, Lucio. So pretty much rules out a lot of these long-range comps, double shield comps in the traditional sense, the rush comps as well. Saw a ton of Echo being played, so... Yeah, it does uh, definitely makes these teams think about exactly what they want to run, which is why we're seeing so much uh, Fara being played, I suppose, you know? You can thank oh. uh, APAC for popularizing that in recent times. <laughs> and look at this. Doha pulling out the Soldier 76 again, and Onigod is going to answer it too. So Onigod is going to be oh, able to do wow. long-range poke onto Doha and potentially free up Naga to go for more of these plays. Naga's going to have Discord Orb on him all the time, though. And, and that's what we were talking about when it came to Li Zhang Tower. There was just, when, it, when we saw them play on Control Center, there were so many more win conditions from the Discord Orb. So you gotta get Repel early. Yeah, but they rotate all the way around and Repel just left high and dry. Didn't know, really know where to position himself, I think, in that kind of scenario. And with Repel gone, no more Discord Orbs. Naga has a bunch more free reign because he doesn't have the Discord Orb applied to him. And now, <laughs> wow, just slamming these rockets from afar. Nice little sleep dart catching onto them. The tank line just being eviscerated here. A nice opening here for the Paris Eternal. And that's the key. The Zen is so much more squishy on the ground compared to Khan on Ana. Uh, but the difference maker being that Repel normally has that Brig with him, which strengthens the backline as a whole. Doesn't really help if Repel is left high and dry. And here goes Naga again with that Nana boost. Yeah, searching for that kill. Look at the movement, look at the moves! Just trying to dodge and juke Doha. Got out of there alive, but with the rockets coming through, Dan just rolling through them with the beat down. That's a couple of kills going his way. Nicely done. Good pulse bomb as well. Oh, Khan replying with a bio nade that kills yeah. Sparkle. That's going <laughs> to halt a lot of the momentum here. Uh, pause in order. Bit of a pause here. coming through. Yeah, and I do want to point out that in the middle of that prior team fight, so so just in terms of the compositions that we're looking at right now, you've got Onigod playing Soldier 76, which really doesn't allow Dan to have that partner in crime. You know, if Onigod is playing the Sombra or is playing the Tracer, then Dan and Onigod could work together to be able to pick off Repel. So it's crazy to me that Repel has been isolated as the first target in so many of these team fights. Two, two times, back to back, he's died now when he's not even getting pressured by a Tracer or somewhere in the back line. They, they, they used Naga's Nana Boost almost as a distraction to then just jump onto the Zen. Yeah. I, I said at the beginning of this match that Repel looks very serviceable. He's come in. He really hasn't had that many flaws. The longer the series has gone on, the more they've started to creep into the game. We saw multiple of them on Havana, and then we saw multiple of them. I mean, we're seeing uh, moments of it now here as well. 
it does definitely feel like some some shakiness having been sat on the bench for what is it like 12 weeks at this point or something yeah i mean it's been a while i think it was week week two against the boston uprising was the last time i'm gonna be honest with you brent i don't know what week it is now what week is it now? Yeah, you, I mean, we, don't ask we, me. Don't ask me. I've lost concept of the time. I've lost concept of the time. I don't know. I'm sure we could, like, skirt back and calculate it. 16, oh, apparently. We've apparently it's week juices. 16. Yeah, right. week 16. You, I mean, you, 14 honestly, I'll... weeks on the bench is a long time. <laughs> yeah, you could have told me any number and I would have believed you. <laughs> to be honest. You could have True. told me anything. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's a long time, right? And that's that's why we were questioning coming in. These starting lineups, by the way, are going to be really interesting at the beginning of the Countdown Cup, not just for this series. as a little hint for you. I don't know if the other teams have really announced much, but you're going to start to see some, some teams really scrambling, I think, to try and figure out who the best players are to put in for, for the specific comps that we're seeing. Absolutely, especially in the West. I mean, APAC has mm -hmm. been playing these kind of comps for quite a while. Not all of the APAC teams have been playing this stuff, but enough of them so that it's not going to be a, a a large shift in terms of the meta game. But in the Western region, people have not been playing ball particularly. I mean, you could say the Gladiators and probably the Paris Eternal are two of the teams that have opted into the ball the most. Um, Dallas, absolutely not one of them. Let's take a look at Dan's ball stats here as well, because like we said, I mean, look at that. Only 15 players have more than 60 minutes played this season. It's, like, it's not much. It's really not much it's at all. It's not that much. Uh, yeah. And as you were saying, Dan was the guy who was playing a lot of it, I think, as well. The Paris Eternal, early on in the season, throughout the season, they've been experimenting with a lot of um, interesting compositions to, to try and uh, find their footing with it. And uh, it means that they actually have more experience than most in the West when it comes to running these different types of, of comps. Because uh, generally speaking, a lot of teams seem quite uncomfortable uh, with the idea of even touching it. I mean, we saw from Dallas Fuel, they were incredibly comfortable. It was almost like a completely one, a complete 180 in terms of how coordinated they were playing. I mean, there was a couple of mistakes here and there with the Winston comps they were playing, but overall a big difference maker. Regardless of all that, though, we're heading into the action as we see the on-pause happening. And the way this teamfight has kicked off, there's advantages for both of these teams right now. The ultimates, the mines scattered across here. Now the tactical visor. Doha wants to try and at least clear the point away. But Stola's going to be jumping straight onto the point just to try and keep this one going. Oni God going to be pressured as well. Nice Helix Rocket did connect there onto Hanbin, just working his way around the back. That's the Transcendence as well. Right there, ready and waiting. Now we have with the Barrage. Didn't get too much done. Set up a bit of damage there, but being pressured into the sky now. And Nana Boost comes through. Propel just did not know what to do. He just stood still trying to avoid the rockets. Maybe he thought it might disappear. Unfortunately, not going to be so lucky at the end of the day. He's taken out, and now Naga's available to just keep pumping in that damage. But still, the Dallas Fuel are on top of it. Sparkle gets down Khan, but the res is there straight away to undo his hard work. And Onigod stays alive. Took out Sparkle, I think, on one health. Yeah, that's a huge move. The Dallas Fuel are just trying to keep this point active as much as they can. The team fight is essentially over at this point. Though, there have been definitely moments where I've said that, and the Dallas Fuel have come straight back into it. I don't think this is one of them, though. They're just desperately trying to get as much capture percentage as they can, and the point flips over at 40%. I gotta say, they're getting almost no value out of this end pick. Rappel is such a uh, easy target in the back line. Whenever he comes forward to try and get into line of sight to be able to apply Discord orbs, even Harmony orbs on his own team, he has to get in through a choke where Naga and Onigod are just peppering him with poke damage. And Dan is very happy to capitalize. We've seen so far in this series, Dan will give his own life for these kind of picks. Yeah, and <laughs> that's the barrage straight into the back. That's a rocket there into the punch. The Transcendence, a little bit late, honestly, from the Dallas Fuel. I mean, a little bit late, that's an understatement. It was very late. Already three picks for them. The res onto Naga as well, so even that kill that Hanbin got, I'm going to be really rewarded with too much, and nobody can touch with the mines onto the point. 100 Doha didn't even try. 40. Yeah. Doha wasn't even running towards the point. I mean, this to me looks like a bit of a communication breakdown as well from the Dallas Fuel. They, they got boomed on that round. Absolutely boomed. Their, their strategy revolving around the Zen and using the Soldier 76 to push away the Farah, it didn't work at all. Doha found that those safe positions he was previously taking on Lijiang Control Center, for example, were being removed away because Onigod had that freedom to roam around and, and challenge him for those lines of sight. It just frees up Naga. It's a great adjustment from the Paris Eternal. I, I'm not sure that Onigod thought he would be coming in here playing Soldier 76. Really didn't, but yeah, it's... It's very I mean, smart, I think. Yeah, just yeah, played a bit it. of the cowboy earlier on. Yeah, yeah. 
but it's uh, it's interesting as well just to keep it in check as well and it, it frees up a bit of this pressure that they're applying onto naga as you've been saying i saw sleep dart there that is an aggressive movement there from naga just trying to work his way into a good position falling very low just drops below the wall so he's going to be surviving but still wants to get these rockets in from afar just trying to dodge and juke and change and chop his positioning i saw pie driver straight down and that's the rockets are damage boosted great follow-up there nice little three-piece there for naga as well i mean the guy is just he's finding all sorts of work done I, i'm dead impressed this, this honestly, with the way he's moving around the map this isn't working make a shift the dallas fuel need to swap i would advise going over to challenge to match the fire in the air and move doha over to sombra they've gone for something different i mean it's pure comfort right now they've gone for the anna brick back back line and fearless is on winston uh, get rid of the ball it, it's not working okay we've had our time we've learned a little bit but now we want to win the game that's what i'm reading into this yeah no, i couldn't agree more Obviously, Naga pumping in these rockets means they're going to be able to build up this nano boost actually pretty quickly, but yeah, I mean, that's a lot of burst damage. Unfortunately, can't bring it back from the dead with that one. They're lost. Two picks four. They are, they're lost on the floor. They don't have enough information and vision as to where their targets are that they're trying to dive on. And Naga is free farming from the sky. No one is challenging him. This, this is why I was advising matching the Farah and keeping Doha on Sombra is because you need someone to keep Naga in check. This, this isn't... I will the Dallas Fuel's composition isn't fast enough without a Lucio. If you were going Lucio Moria in this scenario, okay, well now you can try and get onto Khan before Naga gets value. Dallas Fuel's comp is too slow. Lucio is not available in the countdown cup. Oh, wow. Okay. Sleep Dark comes through anyway. The one for one. And yeah, the comp just a little bit too slow to capitalize. Naga, there's no way he's getting out of this. He is just straight over the rooftops. Flies away, glides away. He's happy. Damage boosted up as well. 71% in counting. Where is the response? They finally built up the nano boost, Josh. Yeah, that's the key. Rappel's going to be able to use that onto Fearless, but now where is Khan positioned? And does Fearless know where he's positioned? That's asleep. Oh my word, and Sparkle ends up dying. So there's no particular follow up. Fearless is still going to jump towards the back. Okay. But even well, if the they win this team gone. fight. Yeah, I mean, yeah. do you have that much faith, though, even if Dallas end up converting on this one? It, it, it feels. It feels. Very, very winnable here for the Paris Eternal. Certainly does. I, if I am going to... Okay, I'll speak some positives into the universe here for the Dallas Fuel. You've got the ball rolling with the alt economy. So you've, you've built... Sure. You're on your comfort picks. You have the MP. You've got the Primal Rage. You can now start to try and rotate this around. Uh, and especially because you have the four positioning as well. You can choose when to engage. Actually, not quite. Because Hanbin is out of the mech, which is a little bit dangerous. But overall, it's not the worst case in the world. Especially if you're smart with these ultimates when you're rotating them around. Still, the Paris Eternal are the ones who are actually taking the initiative. No defense That's metrics, though. The tactical visor off around the side, and yep, the damage-boosted rockets are causing havoc on the battlefield. Where is the response here from them? The MP finally catches on to them. Naga is going to be shooting himself in the foot there with the rockets just to try and get a bit of upwards momentum right into the barrage as well as the hack fades away. Falling so low, doesn't have the heals available to him, so they do take him out still. Onigod battering forwards, just trying to take this fight further forwards for them, but I think Ultimately, the Dallas Fuel are the ones who are still in control. That was a great EMP from Doha, and they managed to convert on it really nicely. And Naga and Onigod are going to swap over here. They need the Tracer, they need the Sombra to be able to close out this team fight. And now it becomes about bullying Fearless, in all honesty. Uh, Khan isn't on the Zen, so they don't have Discord Orb to pressure the Winston. But they still do have the Slam, Vestola can apply pressure. They've got Hacks as well. Hack to start with onto Handbin. d him yeah. would be crucial. So, so close towards it, but they don't end up getting it. That's Repel getting all that healing, building up that Nana Boost. Khan's is online quicker, though. Locked out. Dan sets down the mines. Hambin's into the back line here. Where is the peel attempt for Where's them? the peel? Khan trapped into the corner. No one really defending their back line at all. 85% in counting. And these mistakes are snowballing right now. Now, the point did get flipped over there. I thought Hambin may have been on this. They've been bought a bit of a, a lifeline honestly here because otherwise this was already going to be stretching into a pretty non-favorable fight for them the past eternal with that have been afforded a couple more seconds only a few the dallas fuel take control they have so many ultimates here it really does feel like an upwards battle for the paris eternal a big emp from naga would be absolutely crucial there's the nano onto fearless he has primal balls. as well that's fantastic. Khan and Druja were down with the Nana Boost onto Fearless. So the Primal Rage in his back pocket. Hacked up so he can't even use it, but he might not even need it. They've already got the picks that they need. 
Pistola just trying to keep this one going with the overtime. Not even really necessary. And look at that. Primal Rage used on top. This is the Dallas Fuel just capitalizing off of crucial mistakes playing those comfort picks. And Josh, I mean, you said, like, I mean, realistically, that should have been the pass eternal winning that round with the situation they were in. But the Dallas Fuel, you put them in this situation when they're running the comfort picks. The Winston, the Nana Boost being applied to it, the EMPs as well, rotating all the ultimates. You got, I mean, I just have immense trust in the Dallas Fuel's process to be able to make that work. Yeah, you were completely right, Bren. The alt cycle was just too difficult for the Paris Eternal to be able to break through. But what a difference it makes when they play the Winston Anacomps instead of the Ball Zen. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 I said this on Pacha recently as well. I said, but Dallas Fuel could probably win the Countdown Cup just playing Winston Comps. But that isn't going to win them the finals when they go to Hawaii. That isn't going to win them the grand finals if we still have this kind of meta. So you can see that Dallas are almost incentivized to play stuff that they're bad at in the short term to get good. And then now they're swapping over to Winston compositions here to win the game. A very weird matched. scenario. The damage. Look at that. The chip damage on top of the rocket. So much pressure on Naga. But this is the adaptations that are being made. And Dallas still opting into playing. These Winston comps, a huge Bionade. Fearless on one health. The rockets come through, but as Naga's attention was split there, Sparkle was the one who takes him out from the skies. Very important peel. They might have isolated Khan here as well. Just dodging the rockets. Oh, Khan, he's, he's, he's staying alive. Peel. How is Khan just dodging and juking and jumping over these rockets? Vasilla needs to be eating up a lot of this damage coming his way, but he's got so much to try and pay attention to. Sparkle's still alive, oh, there's the rocket. Oh. Naga finds it, and Jexa goes down as well. Going back into the team fight late. No one's capped up this point yet, but with the Nana Boost onto Fearless, it's pretty much futile. The team fight's already won. As long as they get the healers off onto Khan and keep him up, they're in a very grand position to flip this point over early on into their favor. <laughs> what a play. I don't know whether to give more credit there to Khan or Naga. If Khan dies to one of those rockets, the team fight is over. There's no way. I can't believe They don't that. have the healing to be able to get value out of it. And the battle between the Faras is spectacular. But here's the crucial difference. Doha is on Sombra. He has EMP available. It looks like Khan is his target here. A solo EMP just combined with a bit of a dive. And Khan has no chance. He's shooting Khan around. Yeah, he's playing around the doorway. Oh, oh he sets God. it up with the, the pulse bomb on the rappel. The hack ended up coming out there from Khan. But he already he got the Nabu stuff on Naga. And yeah, he doesn't die. Strategic positioning there from Khan. I was hearing this actually and from Jaws when we were playing ranked the other day, but yeah. Not even just that, but Dredro popped his Valkyrie in the middle of that to be able to peel for Khan. And, and Jex is miles away. Again, this main support difference in terms of Dredro getting more involved in things. It, it leads him to generate his ultimates faster. Jexa isn't as... Um, involved in every little scrap that's happening everywhere, so he tends to be a bit slower to build ults on uh, on Brig, on Mercy even here as well. DMP, catching on to a lot of them. Naga falling so, so low, just has to try and avoid onto the ground. Finally, it's going to be fading away. He wants to try and take the fight straight to Sparkle, but look at that. Power Driver into the mines, into that Bionade. I mean, the Paris Eternal, uh, <laughs> they've already won the team fight. Naga winning that 1v1 on top is just a little bit of extra uh, I guess, I suppose, reward at the end of it. Only God with another pulse bomb. They generate so much faster than the EMPs, so he, it provides him with more opportunities to clutch team fights out, and that's exactly what Onigod did earlier on. The pulse onto Repel was just fantastic. Here we go, bomb engaged from Vistola here. Onigod, don't know where that one was going or who it was for, but Sparkle falls. Yeah, Sparkle going down there to the South Destruct. Not ideal. Now with this barrage in hand, I think Naga's just trying to track up a lot of that defense matrix that's being ate up. But at this rate, Ultimate's probably not looking to be expended when Fearless is right up in the skies. Almost getting that kill onto the opposing Mercy there. Dredro just had to glide away to safety. Finally, Dallas Fuel getting that flip though. And this is where the uphill battle truly begins because this is the round that stands between the series really falling over. Either the Paris Eternal upsetting or the Dallas Fuel walking away with the expected results, I think, from a lot of our analysts. And we've already seen this play out before. 99% for Paris, but unable to close it out. Not a boost. Oh, both of the Faras. They're going for the barrage up close. Are you kidding me? <gasps> Trade it out. What? That's both of them finding the kills just from the rockets flying in each other's faces. That is absurd. Power driver up onto the high ground. Hambin will fall as that's 
the remnants of that damage come through, unable to get back into the mech, and now the point flips over. It's overtime. The Pirates Eternal Can moments anyone touch? away from just closing this one out. Doha forced to reveal himself just to try and touch this one. Has the translocator, so he's back out and safe. But can anybody else touch this one? It's Sparkle's turn. He's going to be blinking on and off. And now, rotating around as Phyllis moves over to the Wrecking Ball. Doha, he looks lost. He's looking around for an MP target, but Vestola, he was camping the translocator. He takes him out. That could have been the play that just won them this entire map. What an absolutely an absurd performance. Only got still alive. Chasing down these targets. The overtime so close to just falling out and fearless. Flailing around the point. Desperate to keep it going. But eventually taken out and removed. The Dallas Fuel. They have ultimates. They have this EMP. But it's got to be huge. Still the Paris Eternal. With all the bodies. With all the damage. It's so difficult for them to try and win this one. But they, they flipped do flip it. the point. Now the they EMP. They're going to be catching it on to only Vestola. But the damage is done. This resets overtime a little bit though and allows the Dallas Fuel to be able to try and get people back in. This was the story of Blizzard World that Dallas was just better in the clutches. But here as the overtime wick touch. is burning down, Sparkle again feeds himself onto the point. Recalls, buying time. Dallas is so good in these scenarios, but it just doesn't seem possible. I don't know how they're going to be able to do this. This is really an uphill battle. No one's dealing with Naga. He's getting the rockets right up into their faces. He sees that Doha moving over to the Doomfist. Just a bit of a comfort pick to try and clutch this one out. But it's not really going to be doable. The barrage up into the high ground. There you go. Sleep dart just to cancel it out. But it's already done. Repel four sparkles next. Onigod chasing them down all over the place. Fearless falling will put a close to it. And that is going to be the Paris Eternal winning this series. Taking the upset win against the Dallas Fuel in map five. Those European players are stoic at the best of times, but I did see a couple of smiles crack in the faces of the Paris Eternal players. It's late evening over where they are, but they have got a wonderful end to their day. That is a phenomenal victory. That puts them positive on the season at seven and six. It sets off a possible four and zero. Their strength of schedule moving forwards, Bren, only gets easier from here. If they can do it against the Dallas Fuel, they can do it against any of their opponents in the Countdown Cup. This Paris team is off on a heater. Yeah, it's looking so, so promising. And I've just heard word as well from our producers as well. Naga has just tied, I believe, the final blow record on Oasis as well with that performance in that final map. <laughs> Just, That's crazy. Just ridiculous stuff. Yeah. So many great players throughout this match as well. Uh, Dredro rearing his head and having a phenomenal performance on Havana. Um, uh, Vestola just continues to be so good for them. Such a great new addition to this team. He's not even new at this point. He's been with the roster for a while. Onigod performed excellently against his former team. Had a couple of rough moments earlier on in the series, but the later it got, the more he was coming out with those big performances. Uh, and and Naga, like you said, was just was just fantastic for them. Outplaying Doha for the majority of the time on the Sombra, and still finding massive value on that Farah against Sparkle of all opponents. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Let's take a look at our player of the match. Uh, lots of players that we could have given it to on the Paris Eternal side. There were some standout moments from almost every single player, I think, on this team. But Khan is the guy who we've been singing the praises with the entire time. It really was a flex support difference in this match here. Uh, you know, with the Dallas Fuel just trying to experimenting, I don't want that. I don't want that narrative really to take away the win here from these guys because they just played. Unbelievably well. I mean, take a look at these, some of these clips as well. Khan just clutching it up. The volleys into the shots as well when he's being pressured by both the Sombra and the Tracer. The reaction times as well to survive in these scenarios. It's been sublime. Yeah, he was absolutely fantastic. He had so many great moments and it wasn't just on the Zen. He was able to have massive impact when he was playing Ana too. These sleep darts and the, the offensive pressure that he's able to apply was nasty good. Uh, and to me, the biggest difference between the two backlines as well is just how little the backline of the Paris Eternal was able to be punished for the, for the value that they were getting. Yeah. We saw in that final map, Rappel getting picked off uh, time and again. And that really was not the case with the Paris Eternal. Yeah, I, I think a difference in terms of, you know, how they wanted to play these compositions was was so apparent and you know clearly the Dallas Fuel Josh as you said at the beginning as well with the article they did with the Dallas Morning News you know they are still experimenting they're willing to let a couple of these matches go but even still the Paris Eternal forced them to 
dip back into the Winston yeah. compositions and they still won against them. Yes. So it's it's like <laughs> the Paris Eternal absolutely deserved this win above and beyond today in terms oh, yeah. of their performances. Fantastic Completely. stuff as well for our first first match of the Countdown Cup as well. Starting things off with an upset. Magical, magical work. Well, we're going to go to a short break and on the other side of things, of course, the Elbush League action is going to be continuing. Coming up next after this one, of course, we've got an interview with Dan and after that one, well, the next series of the day is going to be getting and that's the Houston Outlaws versus the Washington Justice. You don't want to be missing that one whatsoever. So we'll see you in just a few short minutes. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Welcome to Game Break presented by Pringles. We're joined now by Don from Paris Eternal. Don, what a great match and congratulations on the win today. How are you feeling? Yeah, thank you. I'm feeling obviously really good. Uh, we had a 
a rough week coming into this um, with some okay. with some uh, circumstances. But uh, when we have an official, mm. we always go like 500% for some reason. I don't know how, but uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit surprised. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry to hear you, know, you guys had a tough week, but hey, this week's gonna be a great. I mean, it's gonna be a great week, and it's a great start to your first week in the Countdown Cup. Could you guys just beat uh, Dallas Fuel in your first match for the Countdown Cup? Um, you know, what were yep. some of the stuff that were th some of the things that you guys worked on during the break? Was there anything specific? Well, um, we kind of realized that we can basically beat any team if we play well together, but sometimes we struggle. Mm. Um, Maybe with a bit of discipline. We're Europeans after all, you know. We like to do some some weird stuff from now now to then, like basically always. So we need to tone that down a little bit to win like these these kind of games. So I think that's what we focus <laughs> on the most. Okay. Did you guys? I mean, and also like um, you know, we've seen you guys sort of use the wrecking ball composition that you guys used today, um, even in the summer showdown, uh, the qualifiers and in the knockout runs. Did you guys sort of uh, work more to sort of you know? Uh, uh, what, what is what is it? I keep forgetting the word. But anyway, to sort of make better that composition during during the yeah. during the break, or I mean, Ball is probably my best hero of all the tanks. So we're a bit lucky that he's so strong right now. Um, so mm -hmm. like when when it was like at the start of this, and some people played Orisa, some people played Ball of this stage. Right. And we don't doubt that we go Ball because it's just like what we are and what I am most comfortable with. So it's just like an easy comfort pick. Okay, okay. And I just, uh, just I, I heard Soe and Costa saying refine, yes. I, I don't know why, I can't, I don't remember refine, that word just doesn't stick to me today. Anyways, but yes, uh, thank you for your answer. And also, I sort of want to add on to that, you know, that working ball cop that you guys have been utilizing. Um, like I said, you guys have been using that since Summer Showdown. Do you think that sort of came in clutch today because you have a little bit more experience on that composition against the Dallas Fuel? Yeah, I think... Uh, they, they they play a lot of games, a lot more than us, because they go to like Hawaii, they have to travel a lot. Um, we can have more time to just focus on what we are good at and what we want to do. I think today, we just were a bit more refined. We played a little bit better, we were mm. a bit more sharp, and I think that's just the difference. They're still like obviously a really good team. Okay, all right. Uh, so my last question for you, Don, is going to be, you know, uh, I know, I know I'm asking a lot about Wrecking Ball competition. This is another Wrecking Ball competition, <laughs> but I feel like I'm asking this because, you know, you said this was a comfort pick and I sort of feel like, you know, uh, the Wrecking Ball competition and like the way you guys are playing right now, this could be a really good tournament cycle for the Paris Eternal. Um, and because you said Wrecking Ball is sort of your comf comfort pick and because Wrecking Ball is so strong right now, do you personally expect uh, a lot of, lot more teams in the West sort of utilizing the same competition that we've seen today? Yeah, like, I, uh, no disrespect to uh, some of the other main tanks, but I think in the West there's not many very good ball players. Um, <laughs> a lot of them okay. prefer like Ryan or Rissa or some Winston. Uh, like Fate, right. for example, in, in the East is like a lot better than any of the Western main tanks at ball. So maybe if they like start practicing a bit more, they can be better. <laughs> Right. One, one, one more question. I mean, I, I, I'm just having so much fun talking to you, Don. Um, do you think you just <laughs> mentioned like, Fate being one of you know one of one of the best main tanks? I mean, in the East, if you compare yeah. yourself to Fate on Wrecking Ball, what would you say? Do you do you think you have the upper hand? Uh, I will see in uh, playoffs. We'll see in playoffs. Ooh, it's very good. All right, we'll see that's, in playoffs. that's right, right, right. That's a, that's a great <laughs> answer, and I'm gonna end it on that. Thank you so much, Don, for your time, and yeah, thank you, again, Dan. big congratulations on the win. Thank you. All right, thank let's you. go back to the desk. Thank you so much, Danny. Thanks again, Dan. Loki, actually one of my favorite people to hear interviews from. She's dropping yeah. the mic left Same. and right. First, he shows you up on the word refined, like look at me using it. And then <laughs> he kind of kind of throws one down against every other uh, main tank in, in the West, uh, yeah. basically saying, get good, LOL. And uh, you know, then, then ending it on a, on a steamy note, see you on land. What a guy. <laughs> yeah. What a guy. That last what answer. Like, that was <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, such, such absolutely love it, Dan. Thank you so much. Uh, such a pleasure to hear from him again. Now, I want to say this was a close affair, but only really if you're looking at the score, because quite frankly, to me at least, it didn't really feel like the Dallas people have ever really been in control of this match. Now, I talked a lot about that wrecking ball, and yeah, it looked like both teams, you know, they, they rounded up their comms a little bit. 
this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. no. They did Looks like I'm not the yeah. only one on a roll today. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, I'm going to take over before Zoe keeps yeah, going. Do. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I, I think the Dallas Fuel and the Paris Eternal, this first match for the Countdown Cup, I think is going to be a precursor to the rest of the tournament. We're going to see a lot of this wrecking ball, and it's going to be interesting to see how they adapt. Historically, we wouldn't say Paris Eternal would be able to take it to the Dallas Fuel. They've been improving a lot, but this is Paris Eternal's bread and butter, and you heard it from Dan himself. He feels comfortable on the wrecking ball. The whole team is just firing on all cylinders, but Dallas Fuel look a little bit uncomfortable. As you said, Sully, it wasn't as close as the score I suggest at points. They didn't feel as comfortable when they were playing that Farrah. They switched to the Winston from time to time, and it didn't really work on most maps. So. Dallas Fuel, is this going to be the first time we're going to see them be weak in one of these tournaments, depending on the meta? And for the Paris Eternal, these guys are absolutely dominant, firing on all cylinders. You have to talk about every single player on this oh, on this team. Sorry, the big <laughs> customer right there for you. I think Khan on that flex support 100% deserved that player of the match. We had uh, Naga and Oni got absolutely flexing on them and all the heroes that they were required to play, and then Dan and Vistola just doing everything they need to do. Naga tied on this Oasis the all-time Final Blow record with 26 Final Blows in this Oasis, and they just look so comfortable when they played this Farrah style. Dallas looked lost. They didn't have an answer to what the Paris Eternal were doing. If they keep this up, I 100% agree with Dan that we will see them in the playoffs against the Shanghai Dragons. Can I just say, though, before we move on, uh, Please do. This, uh, yeah. Did you have anything to say about Paris before, before I talk about Dallas, Zoe? I know, I know you like talking about Paris. I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, I, I do. Have... I do like talking about them. However, um, I, I'm, I'm just honestly, this gave me all sorts of PTSD watching this because in my rank games, when there's a Pharah, you can rest assured that no one knows how to deal with it. <laughs> and this is just like <laughs> all, all sorts of emotions coming up here. While I'm happy for Naga uh, and the Paris Eternal, it just it's not it's not fun to watch. I also have something to say. Naga in Korean, everybody, it's it, it means get out. So Naga just said get out. Get out to get out. That. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, all right, that, that's on. good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to say about Dallas though. I think this was a good loss. For the Dallas Fuel, and I'm, I don't mean that as in like they should be happy, but like I, I mean as in like there's bad losses where you lose and you're just like either it's like we have no idea what just happened and we're just like completely lost, or you lose and then it's like uh, oh just play better. Like th those are bad losses. You don't want to get away with that. But this was a good loss for the Dallas Fuel in the sense that there's things that they can go back and watch here and learn from. For example, like Jexay, how he plays the Mercy. Uh, he can now look at Dredro and see what Dredro does with the Fire Mercy, how he can get more value there. Um, Fearless playing the Wrecking Ball, for example. Uh, Rappel swapping from the Senyala to the Ana, more reactionary and don't, don't sit on that center for too long. There's some good stuff here if you're a Dallas Fuel player or a fan uh, to feel good about your team. The 